like to uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a new select person on the board. Ms. Coffey, would you like to welcome her on board? Thank you very much. You're welcome. very welcome. Okay, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve warrants as follows. Uh, the warrant of 317.17 for 117,759.55 cents. Withholding warrant 417. 17 for 104,573.31. Expense warrant for 5217 for 51,284.95. Approved payroll warrant for 5917 for 163,901.47 cents. Approved expense warrants for a special project for 5917 for 4,525. Approved refund warrant, expense warrant for 519 for 3,557.12, and approved expense warrant for 5917 for 10,994.06. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Um, I'm probably going to abstain because I haven't had a chance to review the okay. 59 warrants. Okay. okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and I would also like to have a motion to uh, acknowledge the monthly reports from the fire department for April 2017 and cultural council minutes for 4 3 16. I'll make that motion. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Announcements. Tyler Rowland, District A to Senator Ann Goby, will be holding office hours at the Brookfield Town Hall from 2 to 3 p.m. Wednesday, May 17th, and all are welcome. The Memorial Day Parade will take place Monday, 29th, May 29th. Fellow citizens, veterans, first responders, scouts, students, and more are invited to join the proper reservance of the day. Parade starts at 10 a.m. at the Brookfield Elementary School, continues to the Brookfield Cemetery at 10.30 a.m. to the Town Common and Memorial Square at 11.30. In case of rain, the assembly will be at the Brookfield Elementary School cafeteria. Uh, do we have any public access this evening? Before we move to oh, public access sure. on Memorial Day, you're going to give the speech? Yes, I'll do the I'll do the one at the cemetery, and you do the one on the mall. Oh, thanks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to do it vice no. versa. Okay. okay. We have a plan now. Okay, we have a plan. <laughs> All right, great. Thanks. Okay. Do we have um, any public access this evening? Evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, what is the status with our person that's very sick in the department who's doing the work? We need the budget. What do you mean with the treasurer? It's on the agenda. Oh, we have something on the agenda for that tip this evening. Okay. But the work is being done. Who's um, who's conducting the work? Uh, we have a assistant treasurer who's, okay. who's doing the work. Are they going to get us the advisory board a budget soon? She is, I've been asking for it. Well, I, I, I had <clears throat> talked to her, and she said what she was going to do was level fund it from last year. Be All the line fund. items? Yeah, it's going to be level fund. And who's going to present that to us? That and is going to be presented by Holly Chisholm, because Holly is our assistant treasurer right now. Okay. okay. And when, when, are we going to, when can we expect that? <clears throat> well, I will, I will give her a chance to mention that to her tomorrow, because she told me that's what she was going to do. She's what's that, Linda? She said that she would be submitting that to you, but maybe, it, you know, she's had a lot to do, so I will have Karen remind her tomorrow. Okay. And have her get, <clears throat> it, and get it to you as soon as possible. When is your next meeting? Thursday. Thursday. Okay, see if Holly can get that to them, Karen, by Thursday. That's kind of pushing it. Yeah, okay. What's, okay, I was going to discuss uh, something else with that, but I'll discuss that with you after about the pay. 
that's still coming through the on what? that department. So I'll discuss that after. Okay. Um, okay, that's fine. So we'll have that by Thursday? We should have that in by Thursday. We'll and who's do so you got someone that's doing all the work right now? Yes, Holly's been doing the work right now. She was appointed, <clears throat> the, um, tre the treasurer appointed her as um, under our approval. That was about maybe a month ago, about a month ago, as the assistant treasurer. So she's doing the work. Right? And are they bonded, these people? Yes, Holly's bonded. Okay. She got bonded. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Dear. Do we have any more public access this evening? Okay, I am going to move up. It just came to our attention here from the police department, um, from Chief Blanchard, that he would like some appointments done. So I'm going to move, put that on to other, and I'm moving that up before we do our um, petition with Mr. Cook. Okay. Um, this is from uh, Chief Blanchard. He would uh, like some police appointments. Uh, he said, Honorable Board of Selectmen, I respectfully request that you appoint Ryan Stanley, if they'd like to come up. Ryan Stanley. And the sergeant. And the sergeant. Have them all come up. Yeah, have them all come up. Ryan is uh, going to be the position of full-time police officer with the Brookfield Police Department, and he also requests that we appoint both John P. O'Connor of Fistdale and Matthew Lepore of East Brookfield to the position of reserve police officers with the Brookfield Police Department. And I would like to entertain a motion for that. Oh, so moved. Second. Any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Welcome. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, again. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you okay now we're going to take up um jim mr cook would you like to come up we have a petition of the citizens petition for mr cook I'm going to have a couple things I want to hand out to all of you, so I'm going to discuss this. Oh, right. We even did the research I thought we were going to have to do. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Cook. Okay. And, uh, outstanding. Table two. Okay. Oh, you have two tables. Okay. 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 Sit right here. Okay. I have a note here from the town clerk, Michael Seary, yep. that uh, this he says this is to certify that the attached petition meets the requirements of Mass General Law to be placed on the annual town meeting. And he certified this the 26th day of April, 2017. Okay, and for maybe people that weren't here before, Beth, you didn't hear, but I don't, do you know what he wants to do? Uh, I did come in and read a copy of most okay. of what's in the packet, so I'm familiar yeah, with so it. So you yep. are familiar with it? Yep. Okay. Okay. But I will read it just in case, you know, anybody would like to know. It says, we the undersigned request that the following articles be placed on the annual town meeting to see whether the town of Brookfield shall raise or appropriate a sum of money to place street lights on the area of the Murray Memorial Bridge from Mill Road to Town Farm Road at the entrance of Wagon Wheel Park and at the intersection of Rice Connor and Rice Connor Cross Road and the intersection of Gay Road and Rice Connor Road or take any action relative to there too. And he has, it was all certified, he had one, two. He had 15 signatures and all that's required for an annual is 10. So he's all set to go. We'll turn it over to Mr. Okay. Hill. Well, I'm going to request a sum of $1,700, and I'll, I'm going to give you a breakdown as to why I'm asking for that. Um, I'd first like to say that the figures I have here are courtesy of Tim Rowan. I don't know if any of you know Tim Rowan, but he's an yes. executive with National Grid, and since National Grid will do the installation work, I believe these estimates are probably going to be pretty accurate. So anyway, um, 
In terms of putting up streetlights, I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's no charge for installing them from National Grid if you use an existing pole. There is an annual charge for renting the street lamp, and there's a wattage charge. And in terms of these calculations, since, and Tim these, did these, by the way, for me, um, there's actually two charges for the electricity, the supplier charge and the delivery charge. We assume that the town pays eight cents for the supplier charge, and I don't know if that's correct or not, but this was used in the calculations, and there's a five cents delivery charge. So, um, there are some issues with lighting the bridge. So I'm going to talk about, which is table one, which is the street lamps first, for those three points, the points at the intersection of Rice Corner, Rice Corner Cross, Gay Road and Rice Corner, and the entrance of Wagon Wheel. You basically, you have two options normally. You have a 50 watt sodium vapor light, which is the yellow light you see, and then they have these new LED lights, okay? Um, the 50 watt sodium lights um, <clears throat> use up more electricity than the LEDs, but National Grid, if you look at that charge, if you look down the column, you can go across for the lumens, the wattage, but the uh, the luminary charge is the elm charge. You can see that it's less than what is for a comparable 30 watt LED light. Um, when you do the multiplication as to what the wattage is, you can, you can look at the last, the next to the last column, energy plus luminary charge. You'll see that the 50 watt is $105.53 a year versus a 30 watt LED, which is 109.40 cents. Okay, I would prefer LED lights. Ultimately, the decision is yours, but in terms of the calculation, $330 or three times 110 is what I use, rounding, using rounded figures. So that's the cost of the first part. Now, the second table refers to the bridge, and there are some issues with the bridge. There's a light now at the Mill Road intersection, but it's really not satisfactory. And if you read on the bottom, if you read this, you'll read Tim's notes to me. He raises some questions as to why this was not attended to when CSX put that bridge up. But in either case, in order to light that properly using those existing poles, you're gonna to have to put an arm fixture out over, and he tells you which poles, 33 and 35. Tim was, by the way, kind enough to come down and take a look at this. Um, with extra long arms, which you see would be the 15 to 25 foot long arms, and you're gonna to have to use the highest powered for those two on the bridge, the 250 watt sodium vapor lights for the Mill Street intersection. That's what he's suggesting. And he's suggesting three uh, of, the fi of the 70 watt sodium lights for the bridge, okay? Such that when you add that all up, you get $1,171.24 if you look across the table. So when you did, I mean, so where you get the numbers, you take 1170 plus 330, that's $1,500. Now you're probably asking, why am I asking for an extra 200, right? The reason for that is someone's already told me they're, they're gonna put forward an amendment to add a, another street light. So you'd have to amend the motion. I assume it's, they actually want to place one at the entrance to the landfill. So the you, we, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. okay. You said you were adding 1700 and now over no. here. 1700 is what I'm going to ask for. So if you take 1170 for the for, for lighting the bridge yeah. and 330 for those three lights, mm -hmm. you get $1500, right? No, and that's why I'm saying I'm going to ask for 1700 unless we want we could change it here in discussion. I mean, I'm open for discussion on this, but my thinking was I know someone's going to come forward with amendments, so in which case you'd have to bump the amount up. I'm also we're going with estimates here, okay? So there's a hundred dollar fudge factor. Now I don't know what you folks have. Well, I do know what you have in your electricity account. I don't know if there's a fudge factor built in that. I mean, I could put in a request for fifteen hundred dollars and assume that these calculations are correct, or we could add some. Although you know, I mean, I'm open to discussion. You can twist my arm. I could go down to fifteen hundred, but. Do you mind if I, I ask a couple of sure. questions? Sure. Okay. So the you said we need high lumen lights. Is that additional lights versus what's already down at the at the Mill Street right. exchange? And he recommended swapping out the one that's already there. Is that right. right. He's recommended because that's again, if you've been down there at night, does not really illuminate the intersection, and that's a really. I do a lot of night driving in town, uh, so I get well, it. Yeah. Um, and, and it's a hard one because with the turn, 
you're right. looking to light the bridge as well because you really can't see out past the light right. as you but you're seeing headlights coming on so it's actually safer at night than it is during the day in some ways I don't know about, again i'm not i don't know about that i do think from my perspective there's a public safety issue there and again tim tim was kind enough to look at it and he this is his expertise mm -hmm. not mine <laughs> Do you know what they generally base where to place these type of lights? No. The, the only issue, because I'll tell you, I had a discussion with Tim. I said, Tim, in my view, that you should put up another pole, but there's a cost to that. Okay? The cost for my research, I asked him, it was probably about 1500 bucks. So, I mean, what Tim, Tim's suggestion is to take advantage of what you have there and put those long fixtures on it. Again, there's no installation charge if they use existing poles. So, so they would have like a long fixture on it. Yeah, they'd have a long arm, boom arm out. On the already existing poles. That on the already existing poles. If you recall, there's two poles there. There's one, I think it's River Road, is that what it's called? That comes River, in River Street? It's, it's, it's a River Street. Yeah, River Street. There's one there, which is, there's a light on now. Okay. And there's another pole that's sort of set back near the Mill Park, if okay. I recall. Does it make sense to have the, well, it has to, now it has to be a worn article because yeah. it's been submitted yeah, as yeah, a petition. Gonna send, yeah, we're going to put it so on. So I was going to say, it, yes. it, it probably could have got, just gone on as a bump to the electrical. Is a separate street light mm, No, 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 it has to go on as a citizen. It does have to go, <laughs> it has to go on a citizen. Way. I mean, I think there's a broader discussion here. We, I mean, from my point of view, there's no rhyme or reason as to where we have lights in town. Mm -hmm. And I just assume for reasons of public safety, have another 30 or 50 street lights a hundred dollars a pop okay and if i go back when i moved into town by my house i don't know if you know where i sit my house sits on a knoll and there's a there's a drop and there's a current yes i know where you're home okay so a few years ago a young lady speeding on a rainy night hydroplane off that couldn't navigate the turn and got killed okay i think given the number of, of i just think we should illuminate points like that, dangerous points like oh, dangerous sure. curves and stuff. And I think there's a separate discussion here for, and maybe at some point if you want to have it, but in either case, this petition was brought forward originally because I was looking at the bridge. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jim, we'll take it, I, we have it, we'll take it under advisement, and we are going to put it on the wand. Okay, just any other one, questions, I'd be... Just one, so Jim, it's basically 1700 bucks a year. It'd be, if, if, Ruffle, it'd be Ruffle, yeah, be out there. Yeah, to you, I think, what do you, what's the town... It's about twelve thousand now a year for electric lights. Yeah. Thirteen, I think. Thirteen. Close. Yeah, like okay. twelve eight. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Okay. Thank you, folks. Okay, Jim. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to have a discussion with Paul McCarthy. Is Mr. McCarthy here? You want to come up? And it's going to be a discussion on the town hall chairlift. Okay. And if we all have a packet. I'll hand them all off. Welcome. Thank you for the Welcome. invite. Okay. I know that Mr. Holcraft had uh, talked to this, talked to us about this um, a few weeks ago, and he said that he got a quote from you, and he said that you were going to come in and talk to us about this this evening. So, if you want to start, you've been here already, like, and I guess you had looked at our staircase to go upstairs. Correct. Correct. Okay, so if you'd like to explain. Yeah, and I, I also brought some pictures. If anybody has an interest, it's it's best to show you the pictures. Explaining it is one thing, but it's it's basically a platform lift for a wheelchair, mm -hmm. and it rides over the existing stairway. What we do is we install a rail system, either for core posts that go down to the floor at the lowest landing, or posts on like every other or every third tread. Okay, so there's a it's basically, it's like a ski lift. It's a ski lift technology. That's what Garaventer is. It's a ski lift company. We evolved into um, an inclined platform lift company. So inside there's an upper rail and a lower rail. And what there is is a, a cable in there. And it just moves the platform along the stairs. So when it's not being used, it's stored in a vertical position. So it's a, basically a 30 inch by 48 inch platform that resides at the lower landing in the vertical position. If somebody came in in a wheelchair, they push a button, it flops down, the person in the wheelchair rolls on, and that'll take them up to the second floor. It also has a fold down seat, so if somebody's not in a wheelchair and they don't have the ability, that's a pretty decent staircase there, then they can situate themselves um, on the, the fold down seat. 
And there's also remote control pendant. So if somebody doesn't have the ability to operate the lift, that you could walk with them using the pendant and bring them up to the, the second floor. And I'm gonna pass a few pictures around to anybody who wants to take a look. And We put them in actually public buildings and probably public schools are the number one market. Private schools probably as well. As well. Yeah. People make a comment. It's kind of like if you look at this one, it's kind of like a roller coaster on a, for lack of a better term. So we build a rail system where we attach the platform to that. Okay. Massachusetts is a little tighter on the, the codes that get involved with these incline lifts um, and they're getting a little tighter and tighter as time goes on. I brought a page from the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board that shows when an incline lift is allowed in a building. Um, and if you don't mind, I'll, I'll read that. It's just one sentence. Um, an inclined lift may be used as part of an accessible route of travel in lieu of an elevator only under the following circumstances. To provide, ex to provide accessible route to a performing area, a stage, which we know that's not the situation here. In an existing building with no other work being performed and no other alternative is available, such as a vertical wheelchair lift or a limited use elevator or a ramp. The key word being available. And I'm gonna pass this around to the copies of that. I've highlighted that area. So in order for if for whatever reason you think this is a, a fine solution for the town to make the second floor accessible in lieu of an elevator or a vertical vertical lift, um, we need the town building department, the town building inspector to give us a formal letter saying that in their opinion. If this lift does not interfere with egress. You've got a pretty decent sized stairway there, so it's a perfect application. But egress is something that has to be considered. I brought, I think everybody at the table has a guide to inclined lifts. I have extra copies if you haven't. So do you need the building inspector to provide what? Yeah. A formal letter. A yeah. formal letter. Yeah, I have that. We will sign off if the song, as long as we get the variance from the state. Oh, we have to get a variance so, from the state to Yeah. Okay. So we have to deal with Mass Historic. Okay. We have a historic building. Oh, this is okay. Okay, so we're dealing with a historic building. And heretofore, things like this, though talked about, were, were not. They were, uh, the architect always slid twice now in two plans, spending tens of thousands of dollars to get these plans have always slid, slid towards an elevator. And the expert to this is walking through the door now, which is a good thing. And so, have you had experience with getting permits through Mass Historical on historic buildings using this kind of equipment? Yeah, we do. I know we have some installations in historic buildings, but usually, like you said, the architect takes the lead when it's a historic building. We step back and they handle that. And I wasn't, wasn't sure if the building is Totally yeah. historic. Okay, so that that makes a difference. It really does. Yeah. It really does. So Bill um, asked the hard question about historic mass historical getting a permit through mass historical to be able to do it. He had responded earlier to the ADA accessibility, which is good news. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, to be able to get a permit from mass historical to make a change like this is another wicket to go yeah. through. Mm -hmm. He's gonna, you're gonna put posts so we don't damage any of the woodwork. He's gonna post all the way down so we're not screwing into any of the uh, woodwork. Mm -hmm. It's gonna kind of like glide on it because we're gonna have posts into the floor. So don't put any damage to the, to the staircase or the handrails or the, any of the ballast that's going up. 
So it will be able to go around like the oh, way yeah. the mm -hmm. curls up. Oh, it, yeah, it'll, it'll, yeah, it'll work. Yeah, and yeah, our staircase is probably about the best oh, yeah. architecturally for something like this mm -hmm. that you could ask for. Right. You could make it blend in with the coloring and schemes, and but is it going to be noticeable? Of course it will. Oh. But it is wrapped around the corner at the lowest landing, so. Um, your we're also in the elevator business, so your alternative is a vertical mm -hmm. platform lift, taking up about a six foot by six foot piece of property for, uh, for the lift. Basically, a vertical platform lift is a forklift in a closet. That's the simplest explanation. So we give you the forklift, you build the closet, we put it in. So uh, the other alternative is a limited use elevator, much bigger construction costs. The, the incline lift has the least impact on the existing building, but I, I defer to you know our historical experts and just what is acceptable um, without ruining the character of it. It is a beautiful building, so. So we did, next door, church next door, we did put an elevator in, okay. limited use, and uh, it does does work. And again, Bill, if you can remind me, I thought we were talking about 35 when we did the one next door. 35. The elevator. What? Hard, the, hard, the elevator next door that yeah. works? Yes. That, that was about 35. To $1,000? Yes. I don't know. We'd have to get that research. But, but again, maybe that you could help us with that as well as, as Bill works the, the problem. Yeah, the pri was the, the one that's next door, does it have a swing door? Is no. it an old, so it's a sliding door and everything? Yep. How old is that? It's a little bit. Okay. It's a legit elevator. No, it's a, I, don't, I think it was probably more than that, but I, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. I was... A little surprised by the dollar value. I mean, something I'm like just, that. It's my yeah. memory, and it's years ago. It's probably okay. seven, eight years ago that okay. we did that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but but again, to understand what that might be in a cost benefit one over the other, especially if we get caught with permitting issues, it might be a, a good thing to have in our hip pocket. That what we have is the last architect survey, and Bill again, correct me if I'm wrong. It's about eight hundred eighty thousand hardware costs. To install an elevator where they were, where they had suggested, and again, that's just a big nut to crack. Sure. But if there's other alternatives, for sure. Mm. Um, the the unique thing about the incline lift is nothing changes in the building with the elevator, with a pit. The construction costs are way more than my part of the equation, so it's it's a, it is a tough budget thing I'm sure for the town so we're, we're sensitive to that so um, now, Dave, did you get any other estimates on this? We're working on that now. Working on yes. Marie from our board is, is working on it too. Because we should at least probably have three estimates on it. Absolutely yeah. then we just have to see how yeah. those estimates fit yeah. into the to the procurement yes. regulations. Mm -hmm. um, well, didn't that procurement didn't that go up here we we'll under that limit, but, yeah. Yeah, but even though we did that, I think we're we still going to get three bids. I think costs. we should have three bids. Correct. Um, what's the cost of the um, preventive maintenance plan? Because it's general. I mean, it looks like it's included in installation for the first two years, but what's the renewal? It's usually about eight hundred dollars a year for preventative maintenance. It's not required on a lift, but it's highly recommended. Do these need to be permitted? The way that elevators do, yeah, they, they do. Have to get inspected and right. reviewed annually. Yeah, no, two years. Two Every years two years, years, now, years now, yeah. That all depends on the usage too. What we, you know. Um, you know, the annual inspection. You're still gonna get a, get I, yeah, a yeah, certificate. Yeah, you gotta get a new yeah, certificate. Like I'm talking about the maintenance, though. Oh, the maintenance. If, if we don't use it much, then we won't be spending that money, correct? Yeah, I mean, I tell people we give you two years of maintenance included, and then okay. um, you can see how it's going. Um, the number one cause for service issues is abuse of the lift. It's people, the FedEx guy <laughs> puts things on it. The water bottles is the worst because it's designed for a human in a wheelchair to be sent it on the platform. Yeah. They load everything on one side, it, it kicks up like that, and that's right. where the issues come from. So if it's, it's, you can't key it anymore. You used to be able to put a little key switch on the call station. Can't do that anymore. So uh, you could ask for a variance from the state elevator board if you wanted to put some type of security, a swipe card or something like that on the lift. Um, 
But other than that, it's just it's just a supervision thing, and you just make it clear to people that it's a it's a code violation to do what you're doing, and it's a it will likely damage the lift. So, what's the uh, one total bit? What the cost is? Yeah, estimated cost. Yeah, it was forty six thousand, I believe it was forty six eight eight twenty five. Yeah. Okay. And just I brought some drawings from other projects they were working on. Now one's Bridgewater State College. Like I said, another one's in elementary school. They're usually public buildings, but um, the historic thing will be the challenge. Yeah, that's yeah. probably the nut that needs to get cracked first. Mm -hmm. So is, is that something we want to try to find out before town meeting, I would think? Is, what is the chances? Well, well the thing is we have to reopen town meeting. I'll research that in the so. Because I don't know exactly what's involved in the paperwork for the variance. I understand that needs to happen, but I don't know quite what the whole process looks like yet. So. But I don't know if this would be something that we would put on, you know, the town meeting now or if we could put it on in the fall if we have a fall town meeting. Because it's kind of, because we've already, you know, pretty much closed the uh, warrant. So I just said we were going to get put, get this put on at February. Yeah. Oh, so you do want to have it? Yeah, we well, can we'll really just, open we can it. Well, we discuss that. I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah. We'll you said discuss the options. It. We'll there. see. All right. See what the options. Yeah. And, and if because Bill's the, working on it, and I'm working yeah, on it. Yeah, and if you can get the other bids to come in, get the other two bids. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. But I don't necessarily think you need all three bids in before you put it on no. the board. This, no. this at least gives us okay. an idea of yeah. where we're at. I'd kind of like to see it on the warrant and let people decide at an annual if they want to pursue it or not. And we can all, we, so long as we know what the steps are for next actions that need to get approved for it, then I don't see why we wouldn't put it to the townspeople. I mean, worst thing is when we get it on November. Yeah, the worst thing, I mean, yeah, yeah. we don't want in the fall yeah. if we don't get it on right now. At least everybody can get a, a some, you know, find out what we're doing here. Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. So, Bill, you have the mass historic stuff? Yep. Thank you. We're going to go through that hurdle, too. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about, I think it's manageable. It's just a matter of we've got to go Do through the hurdles. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. My issue is the commitment later. Exactly. That's. Well, yeah. we, have to, we have to watch out because yeah, they may be, even with ADA, the variance, they may be looking at long term, looking for an elevator type solution. Which you guys are working on yeah, with grants. We are, we are working right. down the road. Right. And once the grant cycles line up appropriately and everything, and we get all our ducks in a row, we may be able to fund most of that with grants. But that's, you know, that could be five years down the road before any construction happens. So. It's temporary in municipal terms. Yes. So. Yeah, exactly. So that'd be quick if it's five years. So if we get the ramp. Five years is quick. Exactly. Yeah. So if we get, if we get the ramp in you know, the next year, then that gives us four years of use, which is a bonus. Would a discussion with the Architectural Access Board in Boston, would that be? Okay, Tom Hopkins and all that? Yep. Great, great. That's he's on, he's on. Okay, you're on the board. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. okay. Uh, I don't know. I'm involved in town. <laughs> he's trying to get, he's trying to get the upstairs. You, you okay, I got you. I got so you. Well, that's good. We brought him on board, so. You got all the expertise. Yeah. Do we have any further discussion with this? Okay, thank you, Mr. McCarthy. Okay, you're welcome. Coming you're welcome, thank you. Next on the agenda is to sign the Chapter 90 doc documents. And I make a motion that we sign the Chapter 90 document. Good. I'll second that. Sure. Okay. Do we want to know what they're for? Or have you looked them over? I haven't looked them over. Yeah, you haven't looked them over? You want to share it. Okay. Yeah, it's probably good to share it. Okay. Well, um, what it is, we are going to receive some Chapter 90 money to uh, do some crack and seal projects of microsurfacing for River Street, Common, Central Street, Lower River, Howard Street, Lincoln Street, Lincoln Extension, and Sherman Street, and Pleasant Street. And uh, that was, the cost of that is going to be 150000 and that is money that we got to Chapter 9. And so I'd like to have a motion to yeah, have, yeah, we have a motion. Okay. It's just, uh, I think we need to say it. Aye. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I was just suggesting to read it, just what it was. And I think that there is just one that you will have to sign. I signed one too. Okay. Yeah. 
Now, is there any follow-on action that's required besides the signing, or is that all handled by highway? That's all handled. Uh, so goes right to Cindy. Goes right to Cindy. we're moving on to is a retirement. This is to town, the Brookfield Selectman, Board of Selectmen, 6 Central Street, to the Honorable Board of Selectmen, I have enjoyed my time as treasurer for the town of Brookfield, and fortunately, I will must submit my retirement from the town, effective May 9, 2017. This decision was a difficult one for me. I have enjoyed working for the town of Brookfield and all of its townspeople. And thank you for the support that you have shown me, and I wish you all the best in the future. Sandra L. Cady, Treasurer. I'd like to entertain a motion to accept this with regret. With regret and our prayers. And our prayers. <coughs> Sandy, Sandy has all in favor, all in our discussion. Um, Sandy was such a welcoming, person that came in here to our financial team. She did a wonderful, excellent job for us, and she was such an important member to the team. Uh, we hadn't had um, closings of anything since um, FY11, and she brought, she brought us right up to uh, almost the whole closing of fiscal 16, and she's brought in a lot of um, expertise. expertise to that. And she's also got collected a lot of monies and tax titles. So she's done a wonderful job for us. And I hate, you know, I hate to have to take regret to take this, but I'm gonna wish her the best of luck with all of her future plans. And so I'd like to, <clears throat> yep. like to have a um any did no more discussion on this? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we'll have to have Karen now put an ad in the paper to for new treasure. And probably get it, you know, get it in as soon as you, you know, as soon as you can. And we'll probably run it for two weeks. Does that sound good? And we could probably do the Stone Bridge Press. Sure. No. We'll do do, we, do we want to place in any other? Uh, uh, what did we place it in the last time? Did we put it on the TNG? I believe we might have yeah. Do we, do we want to use any of the virtual sites? As yeah, well? we, uh, we will ask. I know the time. Um, the collector has a system that she can reach out to network to all that she can well, ask the we'll small ask communities. Yes, yes. Yeah. that's good. And then we will also yes. tell the, ask the town clerk also yes. because he has a networking system too. Right, and so then we'll get it out. And Mass Municipal Association has got a help wanted oh, ad via do, their site as well. The, I don't know if they have a charge. Oh, yeah, it is a charge. Telegram, I think, if you do place a, a friend ad, they'll also. There's monster. Yeah, they'll put it. Yes, yeah, so we'll put it on the monster.com. So we'll put it in the TNG. Yeah, we'll put it in the TNG and then we'll put it in Stonebridge Press. And right now um, we have um, Holly Chisholm has taken over as Holly is our assistant treasurer. She was um, nominated. She was um, she asked us to appoint Holly, and the board of selectmen had met about a month ago, and we all agreed to that. Yes, we have a question. Uh, Craigslist. Doesn't cost a thing. A lot of good uh, leads there. Hire a lot of people off the Yeah, we could. We could put it on. Yep. Okay. We used will. it myself. Yeah. Okay. So we'll put it yeah. on Craigslist also. Yeah. All right. The next next one is the Fire Chief Corrective Action Plan, and I will turn this over to Mr. Snyder. Will the police chief, uh, the Fire Chief, uh, come up, please? <coughs> So there was an audit that was performed. Uh, Peter and Terry worked together on the audit and the audit, audit findings. And there were uh, a number of things that were su suggestions that were made. And Peter and your uh, and the correspondence has uh, fed back uh, some of the things. I think the 
probably the the, uh, the biggest thing that we have to to think about is the now that we have the credit card and all that, that sort of thing to take advantage take greater uh, advantage of that system now. But Peter, I, I think that um, Carrie pointed out some things and, and you're doing some things, so mm -hmm. all good. And one of the things, though, she said to me, she had talked to me today that you didn't put here in your recommendations. She also said that you had made a statement. Um, Can I ask a quick question? I'm sorry. Did we clear? Is this okay for open meeting? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is okay for open meeting. Right. Yeah, we talked about it at the, the, yeah. at the big meeting, so yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, Carrie had said that she, a statement was made by the chief that uh, things were being handled, you know, the way they were. You know, you went through different other, um, uh, what was the word? You went through different other channels to do a lot of your ordering mm -hmm. because she said that you didn't have, have a, uh, the knowledge on how to use um, different tools on the website and the backups. And she says perhaps you would benefit from a series of, you know, different classes on how to manage your own systems. and. and uh, just a suggestion, not even that he open open to that, but it's available to get involved with that, so you're more involved with that. Okay. And, and Peter's been very helpful as we've gone through the financial okay. policies. Okay. It, actually, quite, quite honestly, we'll talk about it later on or other, but we've, we've had some several good meetings on the financial policy yeah. to update to current standards, and Peter's been very helpful. Okay. So that was just one thing that Carrie had suggested mm -hmm. that we take under advisement. Okay, anything Good. else? No, I, I appreciate Peter's efforts. Oh, yeah. thank you. All right. thank you. Yeah. All right, now the next one where we have here is the uh, approval of the note, of the note sale and the execution of the documents on the police station. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would a like- A yearly effort. This, yes, yeah, this has to be uh, it's a yearly effort of this uh, right here is uh, for no. Let's see. Here. It's coming from uh, Eastern Bank. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's for uh, one million four hundred and seventy thousand eight hundred ninety-seven dollars. And the date of issue on this was May 19, 2017. And the, uh, the daily, the interest rate is 1.25 per annum, payable calculated on the basis of numerous using a 30-day month and denominated using a 360-year day. And so, so motion to approve. Motion, motion to approve. I'll second that. Any discussion on this? Um, have, have we done any type of analysis at what point or at what interest rate we might want to consider a longer term? Because I know usually the state notes are about the best deal out there. Well, I know that we had, didn't we have the other day, Karen, we had people calling in on this? We did have a bit, but again, it's for the short term. Yes, yeah, it's yeah, so for the time. short term. We do the short term every year. Okay. We might want to consider doing it. Yeah, we might consider doing it longer the next time it comes. Yeah, or we may want to just like bid it a couple of different ways yeah. in the future. Okay. And okay. then that way we, we have something to compare it to. I'd say where interest rates are right now, I would certainly go with that. But let's at least try to look forward a little bit. And if it looks like interest rates are going to creep up farther, yeah. we may want to look at well, locking it. We do in. have them come in because we've, I helped out doing all these last year. And we can do I have a motion to sign? Yep, we have a motion to sign, and yeah. we have to do say aye. And do I approve? Yes, aye. Aye. And these are from Unibank.
Can I ask you the certificate back for just a second? Uh, the one that was just signed for this. Yes, right here. The, the, the other one, yeah. Right. That one right. Okay, thank you. So you may be done with the last year's document. Some of these are from last year, she said. Okay. All right, it just seems that this one actually coordinates, the dates on here coordinate with this one, and it seems like it's a different rate, that's all. I'll sign it, but I'd like to Stick follow note. up. Stick yeah. Note from you can check with Holly. Yeah, I'll just check with Holly tomorrow because the, the two of them don't align. Okay. Town clerk. Oh, yeah, Michael has to sign this out and put a seal on it. Next here on our agenda mm -hmm. is some, uh, we have appointments to the CIP, CIPC committee. Okay, so I would like to entertain a motion to appoint the following members to the Capital Improvement Committee for a three-year term ending on 6-30-2021. We'll make the motion. We'll make the motion. I'll second it. Okay. Uh -huh. Robert Falter. Kermit Eaton, Peter O'Connell, Sean Mulligan, Al Jones, and Kathleen Hosterman. Do we have any discussion on that? I think it's great. Do we want to try to do, if you want I, to add me to the list, There's, it calls out that we're supposed to have a selectman on the CIPC. Oh, that would be great. That would be nice. We will put you on also. Okay. All right. I'm not hearing you. Oh, I'm sorry. It, uh, the bylaw calls out we're supposed to have a selectman, and since I don't yeah. currently have any additional duties, I said that I would be, be the selectman to go on there. Okay, thank you. Okay, so if we want, do we have them all here to sign? And seeing that, seeing so, we have a clerk. We have a clerk. This is the clerk's duty to sign all of this. Fair enough. But we don't have one for death. So we don't have one for you. That's okay. We have one for you. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, for the for the capital improvement capital uh, planning. Planning. Mm -hmm. Peter's got a question. Okay, Peter. Yeah. Um, would Karen then set up the first meeting? And do we have a charge or that's what we? we're just looking for now. We don't have a charge. We, must have, we, do, have a charge. we do have a charge. We will get the charge. Yeah. And we can even ratify all of these at another meeting and we the charge. If you'd like us to at the next meeting. But how will the first meeting be set up? How will Karen leave? Do you want me to set it up on the Do you have sure. a is there is there a day that you We've got a number of the members here. Is there, yeah, is there a day of the week that's better yeah, than others? Yes, a date that's good with all the members and a time. If you want to hold it that same time, you know, every month, say like the first Tuesday, the seventh, you know, how do you want to do it? Oh, yeah. 
Do you have a Do you have a date that works for the folks that are in the room? There had been discussion of meeting during the day if it were convenient to everyone, but uh, with your schedule, it might not be convenient. Um, schedule it, and I'll do my best because I do have some control over my daytime meetings. So what, what would any day but Tuesday for me? Any day but Tuesday during the day. Any day but yeah. Tuesday. Okay. Okay, this one, the charge is here. Okay. Okay. Uh, what it is, it's, an, it's a capital planning bylaw and committee, section 8 of the Brookfield Bylaws Capital Planning, in accordance with Mass General Law, chapter 41, section 106B, a capital improvement planning committee shall be appointed by the Board of Selectmen to be composed of the following, one member of the advisory board, a member of the board of selectmen, the treasurer, a member of the school committee or designee, and three or more members of the community. The town accountant shall be an ex officio member and have no right to vote. The committee shall select its own officers. The community members shall serve staggered three-year terms for the first fiscal year after the adoption of the bylaws amended. The Board of Selectmen shall appoint one committee member, one community member for each one year term, one community member for two year, and one community member for three year. The purpose of the committee shall be to study proposed capital overlays involving major non reoccurring tangible assets and projects, which are per one, are purchased or undertaken at intervals of not less than five years, two, have a useful life at least of five and three, a cost over $5,000. The committee shall prepare a submit to the Board of Selectmen in February of each year an annual report recommending a capital improvement budget for the next fiscal year and a capital improvement program including recommended capital improvements for the following five fiscal years. The Selectmen shall review and approve the report and submit to the annual town meeting for acceptance by the town. And that's it. That's our okay. Yes. Okay. Whoever the treasurer will be, we'll get a we'll have a treasurer on. I think in appointing the committee, uh, sorry, the bylaw, you have to designate who's in which which lots. Okay. Two year, two year, and three year. Okay. Mm. Well, we have money on the stack. If we had money for three years. We can stagger. Well, the bylaw calls for the calls yeah, so we'll stagger so. them. Oh, okay. then, 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 well, we'll stagger them, and then we'll we can bring we'll bring this back up to you again. If that's all right. Well, um, maybe well, it should be part of the motion. Well, yeah. I, yeah. We could well, always we could always amend the motion. Yeah. The motion well, I, okay. Yes, I will um, make the motion. Uh, I'd like to have a motion to stagger these terms. So moved. So moved. Uh, may I have a list of the three people because we did include in the motion who's which Four. which term yes. for the for the uh, ad hoc members. Mm -hmm. Okay, because the community ones. Yes, yes it would be the community ones. Okay, that would be Kermit. Kermit. Or is he from water? Are you from no, are you are you the um, community? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then probably Sean is from the community also. And Al Jones. That's not here, so he gets Al the short stick. So is that, does that mean he gets the short stick or the long stick? And how about what, what is the preference? Do I see him here for Peter? I have a song for Peter. Oh, yeah, here's Peter. And then in the new we get a new treasurer on board, we will have a new treasurer. Is there is there a preference amongst the members that are in the room for how long a term? Yeah, does, does it say that on the letter and any of those letters that on any of the letters? Oh, does the letter say it in the past? Uh, yeah. 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 Especially yeah. request I approve to say thank you. But Bob is going to be like the advisory board. Yeah. Right. And then we have Kermit, Peter, and Sean. Is there other letters? Letter. No, the only one here is we have one from um, this one from Peter. That's the only one we have. And there's also one here. That's not the one. 
So, so it's three, two, one. Okay. <laughs> and Al Jones is whatever you decide. Yeah. Okay. So you said three? Okay. So that's going to carry 20. 20. Okay, I'll defer to what you decide. And what this would carry to. I think it went back. Back your way. You did. Maybe not. No. 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 That's funny. Okay, so these three, and then Al Jones is also at large? Yeah, we'll put Al Jones at large. Okay. So we'll put him on for, for one for now. Yeah, for one year. Put him on and, then, uh, and then, you know, it's hoping the yucks. Yeah. All right, then everyone, you should probably go in and see the town clerk, and you know, we want to get sworn in. Our next one is special permit uses. These are for um, for access to uh, to move the um, for South Pond and the motion to approve the following special use permits for the American Bass Association D97 to use South Pond on 729.17 for bass fishing event, and the next one is the American Bass Association. And to, you, and to use South Pond for 7.30.17 for a bass fishing event. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and these are a couple Aye. more that signed by the clerk. They got a stamp it. So, so that's just a signature? It's just date, a signature. Or just an initial and date for, the, for those? Insurance for IOD um, insurance policy. Uh, I'd like to um, entertain a motion to approve the injured, injured or duty insurance policy for fiscal 18 from Cook Insurance and allow the chairman to sign. And there is no change in the rates from last year. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion on this? Aye. Okay. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we have a question? No, nope, Bob's waking up out there. Okay. I'm going to move up a couple of things because we have a joint meeting with the advisory committee. So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is uh, take if we have something under other, and I'm going to do the correspondence. Two things under other. Two things that I have under, okay. under other. I just want to make sure okay. I've, I've announced it to those people that are familiar. But at the campground tomorrow at 1 o'clock, Sharon's so gracious that she's going to be taping some of the activities that are occurring at, at the campground with respect to the UMass Adena Archaeology Project. Okay. So that's at 1 o'clock tomorrow. tomorrow. And, uh, and I did, back to those that expressed interest and I had their emails, I have uh, invited them to attend. And then the second thing that we, 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 uh, we met tonight at 6 o'clock because of the uh, advisory board meeting and the timing. But that we voted the other day yeah, to, to, to move to 6:30. To to so, yeah, I was going to ask about that. Yeah, we moved that to 6:30. So I just want to make sure 
people didn't show up a half hour early yeah. next time. Yeah. So starting on our next meeting, which is the 23rd. 23rd, we'll be meeting at 6.30. I'll have to excuse me just for a minute. Do you need me for any help? No, I'll just read. Yeah, I'll be right back. Okay. We have here some correspondence. Um, this is from... Uh, it's from 2017 yearly operational plan for right of way management from CSX Transportation. Okay, so on behalf of CSX Transportation, Amy Foster Wheeler is providing you with uh, information on behalf of the CSX 2007 yearly operational plan for right of way management, according with Master 133. Section 1107, the Massachusetts Right of Way Management Regulations. The YOP describes how CNX will control vegetation on the railroad, row in Massachusetts upon your request, and we will send you an electronic copy via a mail or hard copy via U.S. mail of the YOP document 2017 and maps of the CNX right of way in your municipality. And this is from Stephen Herzog of the Amic Forest Wheeler Environmental and Instruction. Instruction, 271 Mill Road, Chelmsford, Mass. In Sicily, uh, this is signed by um, Stephen G. Herzog. Inside, that's how you say his last name. Uh, our next one here is from um, on open, the open meeting law complaint that was um, on April 27th, and uh, it's open meeting law violation of 22018, it 228.17 has been closed. Okay, and now this is another one that comes from the West Brookfield uh, Board of Selectmen. It was sent to us regarding concerns on um, some different uh, solid waste uh, transfer station that's going to be over in Ware, Ware, Mass. And this was sent to us by Representative Gobi. And it says, read Town of Ware potential agreement in the Tri-County Recycling to allow operation of Municipal Solid Waste Transfer Station at 198 East Main Street, Ware. Dear, yeah, it's sent by the Board of Selectmen from East Brook, West Brookfield. Goby. And this is Dear Senator Goby and Representative Berthian. The West Brookfield Board of Selectmen is writing to express our concerns on behalf of the towns of West Brookfield regarding a potential agreement between the town of Ware and Tri-County Recycling, which is anticipated to be brought before the Ware Annual Town Meeting on May 8, 2017. While we understand the agreement is still being negotiated between Council for the parties, we have been informed by the Ware officials that the proposed agreement apparently will allow Tri-County tri to operate a municipal solid waste transfer station with up to 200 tons per day at Tri-County facilities located at 198 East Main Street and Ware, which is off Route 9, just above the boundary between Ware and West Brookfield. The Ware Board of Health, following a lengthy public hearing and process in 2015, previously rejected Tri-County's request to undertake such operations, denying Tri-County application for a site assignment modification, considering the literacy of the testimony presented at the hearing. The Board of Health determined the Tri-County has failed to adequately demonstrate that the acceptance of municipal solid waste at the facility should not pose a danger to the public and safety. And, uh, and this so is the residents of West Brookfield are very concerned about the potential change to the operation of Tri-County's facility. We are especially concerned with some of the conditions that we understand have dis been discussed with Ware and Tri-County with regards to restrictions on entry to the facility regarding the traffic, truck traffic to enter the facility from certain routes that would effectively divert truck traffic from downtown Ware to enter the facility be traveling through West Brookfield and the neighboring communities. We are opposed to the proposed agreement with all these conditions. Such an agreement would not reject a major decision by the town's Board of Health in Ware 
by arbitrarily and well-founded public health and safety concerns that wear town bounty lines, ignoring the broader regional impacts, the expansion of tri-county operations at 198 East Street facility it will have on the surrounding communities. West Brookfield is evaluating all legal avenues available to it to oppose this potential agreement. We urge the surrounding communities and our state legislature delegation to inform themselves regarding this important issue and join us in the opposition to this potential agreement. Thank you for your attention and regard. Very truly yours, Town of West Brookfield Selectman, Sarah Allen on behalf of the Board of Selectmen Chair. Um, I was contacted by Mr. Tidman. I don't know if you've heard anything about this. What they're going to do if they have this waste facility, they're going to be coming with these trucks. It's about nine all the time, and it's going to be a lot of traffic. And they said that they can either come up at 148, you know, if they get off and say, come in to go to where? Say if they came off the mass pipe or something, they could come up 148 by the school and come up this way. Or even when we get um, the, the bridge going, when the Dunbrook Bridge is reopened, it could be coming down our way, and it would mean an awful lot of extra traffic going on the roads. And this is what, you know, they don't want this to happen. Do we know what the current state is of that facility? How many tons they're processing versus, it, no. it sounds like they're moving it up to 200 tons, but what yeah. is it currently? I don't know what it is currently, because this is just what, you know, they had written to us now. Okay. So, this is probably something we could, uh, Karen, could you maybe check with West Brookfield and see if they know how much it is right now? Because it would help to understand yeah. what's the, yeah, the change I know, in the Yeah, I had talked to you, now Mr. Jack Tivenin had called me about it. He's the vice chair. They're very concerned about this, and he just wanted us to, you know, get involved with this also. And he was also going to be sending to the town of East Brookfield, too. So traffic's the major concern? Traffic is the major concern on this, with all the trucks that are coming in. Charter lineup changes again. We just had some of these at our last meeting. Okay. This letter gives notice that on May 31st, 2017, the following changes will be made to our channel lineup. RTL International, SD, and HD will cease transmission on channels 420 and 853. German View will no longer be available, which operates. <coughs> One World Sports SD and HD on channels 275 and 875. Monthly subscription charges for these services will be removed after German View is disconnected. For a complete lineup, visit Spectrum.com channels to view this notice online and visit Spectrum.net programming notices. And if you have any questions, um, you can reach Anna Lucy, is her name at 774-243-9735 via email at anna.lucy at chad.com. Right. And that's all that we have for that. Okay. And next we will, if we have the advisory board members, because we're going to start a joint meeting with the advisory board. To discuss the, um, we're going to review the articles for the annual town meeting. Do we need to take a couple minute break and set them up? Yes, yeah, so that's what I was just going to ask. If we could take a minute break. Yeah. We have some new advisory board members, I said. Yes, hi. Hi. I'm Steve. I'm Linda Wright. Steve Gillis. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. Steve Gillis. Yes, it's Well, you're appointed, I think it's to the, um, no, did he get the appointment? I, I just need to turn this on. Okay. So I don't know if his will be come up at the end There's of the Well, anybody, anybody who's yeah. appointed during the year would come up and then Before it Before the board of selectmen, and then afterwards, and the committee appoints their own. 
Yeah, after the town meeting, you guys yeah. have right. 30 we days. We have up until the town meeting to then appoint, you do your and then afterwards, we, right. <clears throat> then you do your, your own appointments. Right. Okay. Okay. Everybody sign in. Get a sign in. for Cameron to bring coffees back. <clears throat> Is that what she's doing? Yes. Yeah, <clears throat> Is that the old one that used to be over in the treasurer's office? Is it? I mean, no, it used to be in the town accountant's office. Oh, Paul forgot right. to put the water out. <coughs> Usually Paul puts us out water. Oh, go okay. get yeah, I just got it out of the bubble. Yeah. Guys, I don't know if these are going to be in, in order to, according yes, to what yes, they do. Yeah, yeah, we have all the ones that are in the box. Right, I know we're different. Oh, okay. Okay, because we can put on. Yeah, maybe in the future it's best to try to start from the get go the way that Linda says to start numbering them from the block ones on. That way there's not the confusion, because every year there's the confusion when you go to renumber them. So I, I would agree with Linda that you may want to start doing but, it that way. We, that we didn't think of that. Then we didn't realize, when we were doing, going through them this morning, we didn't realize that we had to do the block ones also. Right, That's right. what happened this yep. morning. Go for oh, it. Okay, we all set? Let's go. Okay, I'd like to entertain a motion to open the annual town meeting warrant and to place Articles on the annual town meeting one. So moved. Second. Uh, okay, all in favor? Any discussion? Okay. Do it. Okay, we'll go. All right. We're going to place like we normally do. We have article one is to see if the town will vote to accept the annual report of the town officials as printed. The second one is to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate 
sums of money which are necessary to defray the expenses of the town for the insuring year. And then we're going to, we have block ones here. These are ones that they come up every single year. It's Article 3 through 12. And those, those are, hand, are handled every year. Oh, and 13. We have another one on the top. Uh, 13. So we'll start now. Now we'll start numbering them as, uh, as 14. And we'll take a vote whether or not we would like to put them on the one. So this one will be 14. But they can change. A lot of times we do change the numbers. Okay, this one is from um, the library trustees. An article to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate, transfer or borrow a sum of money for the library building maintenance account and take any option. It's, they, they need, uh, they're proposing $7,400 to pay an architect required by the Massachusetts Historical Society for the Massachusetts Preservation Project Fund grant MPPF. We have saved $12,000 over several years and applied for these matching funds and grants to improve the front facade of the building, the gargoyle, downspout, and window restoration. The trustees and staff continue to prioritize upgrades, mainly for the town's historic building. Um, I'd like to take the camera. Put it in, please. Okay. And then I'll, any, I'll, I'll second. Yep. And, and this is 50% money. This is, oh, good. 50 percent so, so that's money. Okay. this is to support the grant article or grant submission. So the, the total grant they're applying for is 19.4? Something like that. Yeah. Okay. They didn't put that on here. Okay. All right. So that's 14. Now, do you guys? We approved this, too. You approved that, yep. too? Yep. We had no questions on it. Okay. All right. Now, this would be number, this would be number 14. 14. So this would be number 15. Um, to see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 15 of the Personnel Bylaws, Section 2, Mandatory Classification to include the position of Assistant Treasurer. And this is sponsored by the Personnel Board. Motion to approve. Yeah. Yeah. So Entertain a motion to put, put this on. And I'll second that. Any discussion? I'll see all in favor? Aye. Aye. Dave? We approved that last night okay, as well. Did also. Okay. Now we have another one also. Um, to see if the uh, town will approve, to see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 15 of the Personnel Bylaws, Section 2, Mandatory Classification, to include a cable studio coordinator. Uh, do I have to entertain yeah, yeah, a motion? Yeah, What's that again? Second. This is for to see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 15 of the Personnel Bylaws, Section 2, Mandatory Classification to include Cable Studio Coordination. No, no, this was the Treasurer. Oh, okay. He wanted, Dave wanted this re-read because we didn't have that. We got it. No, we just, they're not in, we, we, the ones we have are not in order from what you're doing. Oh, they're not? They're not yeah, in order, no. The, the second one. In the order, of what they just got was the uh, cable coordinator, and then the third one is the. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Because we have. Because we have. Because we have. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. So we're re I'm renumbering those. Oh, three is going to be 15. Yeah. Right. Three is 15. And, and two is 16. Two is 15. I don't know. We have. Um, Sharon, did you tell me that your husband. Kevin is going to speak a little bit on this one? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm the uh, chair of the... Uh, you want to pull a, You can pull a chair. Uh, you know, actually, I, I spend so much time sitting down okay. in the car all day. It's more comfortable for me to stand at this point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, this is a uh, position that is... Uh, commonly found, we find it in our research in a lot of uh, public access stations in the Commonwealth, or something like it, not necessarily its exact title, but it, it's uh, a part time position that's answerable to the Public Access and Communications Committee that uh, would just ensure that there was somebody around who would uh, 
whose job it was specifically to ensure that the equipment is maintained and operating properly to answer and investigate any outages of the, uh, of the uh, system, uh, of the channels, particularly on uh, days when uh, the, uh, the board members are at work, uh, okay. that sort of thing. And uh, you know, as, as time goes on, the, the position might evolve a bit too to developing uh, volunteers or uh, programs for volunteers too, depending upon the, the expertise and experience of the person who would be sitting in that position. So uh, we, we propose it as a warrant article here, uh, mainly because the Board of Selectmen is the, uh, the ultimate hiring authority Town, but the payment of uh, any wages or salary for this would come out of the grant money that is given to us by, by charter. You know, that that we would get that money from charter regardless of what. So we're that's spending. nothing. That's nothing that would be a line item. Would it? it won't come out of the budget. It won't come out of the budget. No, so this self We don't have, we don't have to have a line item. Okay, that's good. Okay. So that's the, that's the uh, genesis of that. Oh, well, I, I do have one question. What's the expected number of hours for the person to work? Pro probably about 15 hours a week. 15 hours. That's, that's because of the punch. And, and the, right. <coughs> and just the reason why I'm asking is because um, if we went over the tipping point threshold, you'd have to calculate into the to exactly. the cost of exactly. the care, that's what we benefit care. So, so you want, want to stay under 19 hours. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, the, I'm on the um, I'm the chairman of the personnel bylaw committee, so we are meeting on Thursday. Right. So we're try and make that. Okay. Is that at two? At two o'clock, okay. and we're going to we're going to bring this up. Okay, great. And we'll, rate, we'll rate it and see what the pay scale and everything's on it and the grade. Super. Okay. All right, Kevin, thank, thank you. you All right. Okay, this one, the next one here, was number four. We'll remember that as 17. That will be 17. Okay, and this is the citizen's petition. Well, did you want to go back to this? Oh. Is that the street lights on there? Six, uh, I, this is the treasure. I, I did that one already. You did that one. Okay. Did that one. All right, good. That's 15. All right, and good. 16. And okay. Now, 17, uh, that is the one we're going to place on. That's the citizen's petition. Okay. And every well, one of the people the benefit for the PPE for the equipment. Um, did, didn't you say that the advisor was going to put something in for the um, personal protection equipment? Um, oh, yeah. when, what, what I, I thought I'd seen Maria was going to ask her. But something Are you talking about the highway? Well, the, and I know that the, the fire is also going to cost them money. Yeah. We're taking it out of the budget now. But shouldn't it, that's going to be addressed, correct? Yeah, well, we, oh, yeah, we need an article for that. Yeah, I I know that well, wait, wait, are you talking about the street lights right now? Or are you talking no, about no, no, which no. one? I'm just asking about the personal protection equipment. Yeah. Okay. The yeah, article, so I think I talked to either you or Maureen and said that there was going to be an article put in yeah. for that once you yeah. realize yeah. what the yeah. cost yeah. was. They did, they, they, it's in here, but the, the yeah. basic yeah. hot hats and the vests and stuff can come out of their operating expense. Well, what about for the highway, though? The highway, that's what I'm talking about. And the highway is doing, they, they're doing an article in here for the um, exhaust welder and the uh, flammable cabinet. Oh, that's all it is? Okay, so they're yeah. going to need, oh, they need, they need No, but they need all of their protective equipment. I thought that they had to buy all of that yeah. also. Well, it was, we figured it wasn't that much do, money. Do, well, it was hot do, hats do, and we, do we have the calculations on what yeah, it is? Yeah, Herb said it did talk to me. He said it was going to be $10,000. For that no, we, we, we weighed it all out and it didn't come to that at all. We're talking about hat hats, 45 a piece. The, uh, their coats get cleaned. Um, the vest, they're already paying for their vest in their budget. Um, they need face shields. So where's the 10,000? Herb, would you like to come <clears throat> up and speak on that? The charter where we're talking about. Hmm? We're not talking about... <clears throat> We're taking this out of order. Correct. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's we're, we're out of order. Correct. Right. That's yeah, just so we're not good. taking that out of order. What, what is the article then that we're yeah. talking about? Okay, well, let's get that. Yeah. What was the citizen's petition? Oh, the citizen's petition. Okay, that's 17. Well, are you doing the street lights or are you going to talk? To, are you we already approved the street lights, so we're going to put that on. That's okay, 17. Okay, we agreed. Okay, if you didn't ask us, we agreed. Okay. We agreed. Okay. All right. oh, oh, the, and I guess the question is. 
so agreeing or supporting? We're supporting We're it, that's correct. Yeah, they're going to support it. Okay. So now which one are you working on now? Do we want to get to the, um, we can skip to that. Yeah, why don't we skip to this one, Herb? I'm sorry, to leave. Because Karen <laughs> had the note in here, right here. We'll, we'll get play, back to you. We'll blame Karen for that one tonight. Jeez, <laughs> Now we're going to do 18. Okay. All right. Okay, this is to see, um, see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow some of money for work at the fire station or take any action. It's, um, it's sponsored by Peter Martell and the fire station. And, it's a, and uh, he would like waiting on estimates for plumbing and electrical. Do you have any money figure at all on that? It could be as much as $10,000 of the electrical estimates going to take a long season. The plumbing is probably big. No, the, the, the plumbing may only be two to $3,000, but the electrical replacing the entire main panel, which is going to be very labor intensive, is going to hear back from On so the main panel. I was going to say, what's the, what was the scope of work for the plumbing and for the electrical? The plumbing is since we converted natural gas, we haven't had a working stove. Whereas that's the primary emergency operation center because usually okay. propane you can't have two mediums of, of liquid gas or liquid fuels in the building so once we put in natural gas we had to get rid of the propane for the stove so the uh, they didn't plumb that when they did the heating at the same time <coughs> no. no in fact they, the person that rigged up the natural gas didn't realize it was propane so we had to remove the propane so, and the original system that ran the propane to the stove was very old couldn't be reused do you have any estimates on on anything? So we could, we didn't vote on this because we yeah, had no. He, he no, said, no, no, no. He said for the for the plumbing it was between two thousand and three thousand, and the main panel. He, did you say it could be up to the I'm cost thinking, of ten? I'm thinking the total may be around ten thousand dollars because replacing the main panel is going to be the most. Main what happened price. that you have to replace the whole? The, the main panel has been over uh, overloaded on safe lines, just inefficient, and it should have been replaced years ago. It's it's back to eighty four. The main panel has just had work done on it. Okay. The, the breakers need to be replaced. We have issues occasionally. Okay. And <coughs> Scott's even said, yeah, when, when it really says we should replace it. So you're going to have Tantasco do it? Uh, I've had a list with Tantasco on other items for a couple of years now without success. And even that the panel itself would be beyond their scope. It would, what? Be, it would be much longer than the day, the part, okay. part of the day that they can spend on it. Okay. Okay, so you'll have to go out there privately. Okay, all right. We kind of, I mean, last night we discussed this. We, we like to have some kind of documentation before we start throwing money around. Mm. We didn't vote on it. You so didn't vote on it. I don't know what, what the board wants to do tonight. Do we want to put this on? Put it on. We just like yeah, to have some yeah, kind yeah, of. Yeah, we will. Yeah. I'll take a motion to. Uh, motion what do you guys want to do for a figure? We'll talk about it later. All in favor? <clears throat> all right. All right. Yeah. Okay, we'll put it in and talk about it later. Okay. Now, this is this one. What's the figure going to be, Linda? Well, it was an estimate he said for the plumbing would be between 2,000 and 3,000. In the main panel, he's thinking maybe 10. A total. A total, total of 10. A total between the so two. Bottom, total, bottom, bottom, bottom line is. Oh, I thought he said the main panel itself was going to be 10. I, I understood is a total of. Oh, the total oh. of the two will be 10. Oh, okay. All right. I misunderstood. <clears throat> So, and, and I think one thing we need to kind of set as an expectation is if we don't have the estimates in time for developing the motions for town meeting, then yeah. we'll recommend yeah. that we pass yeah, over. Yeah, pass over right. till the fall. Yep. Okay. So if, if we have good numbers, then, then we can I think time that's, to make what do you guys want to do? I think, I think that's, that's reasonable. I like, this, I like to see some numbers before we start just whipping out, saying, oh, it's going to be 10 or 2 or 3. Well, he'll give well, us, uh, he well, will we'll give us the numbers. numbers. He'll come up with no. He will. We're going to put it on, and he's going to come up with the numbers. And if we don't have the numbers by the annual, then we'll put it on in the fall. November. In November. Yeah. yeah. That's what we're going to do. Okay, that uh, makes me feel a little better. I just don't. I mean, we're, we're just. You know, it could be this, could be that. I mean, we got to be something. You know, right, townspeople right. want to know exactly right. what we're spending. Yeah, but we the, will. We'll have the numbers. Peter's going to get us the numbers yeah, for the town. Okay. And if we don't have the yeah. numbers, yeah, we some estimates, documentation. Right. And, and he, and he right. understands that if we don't have solid numbers. 
then yeah, it it's going to get passed. On. Well, it'll probably be on the warrant, and yeah, and we'll at least pass, be. And oh, we just, just pass, pass over. over. We'll yeah. pass over it. That's all. But so people could, will at least be aware that you guys we have all the good potential with that? out there in the future yes. that we yes. need to take. You want to take a motion to accept that? Yeah. Keep it small. Let me make a second. I'll second it. All in favor? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now right, we'll go along with that. Move on. No. Number six that we had numbered is going to be 19. And this is also from the fire department. <coughs> this is um, to raise appropriate to transfer a borrow with some of money to purchase a pump and truck for the fire department. And this is also sponsored by Peter. And the additional request for it is recommending 200000 I'll make a motion to place it. Oh, yeah, please. No, no. For discussion. In second. Okay. All in favor? Well, let's have a discussion. Are we going to have a discussion on this? Peter, do you want to give us a little um, some info on this now and how we'll on the public? We haven't addressed the tape needs in years. What, what year's the truck? Yeah, what year? One of them's in 83, one of them's in 89. And they should only be there for 20 years. So they're both well over that. No, do we, well, would we probably take this money probably out of the fleet account? And we probably don't have it. We How don't. Much, what what no, do we have in the fleet account, Karen? There's not much in there. There's no. not much left. No, this would just be to start the process. There is some new stuff on the market that could be considered, but if nothing else would start the seed is to, to work you, towards is, the is, Or the just start some money to go towards yeah. the truck and put some into the fleet account. If something comes along yeah. that, seems to work with it, then we'd be in a position to act. If, if not, then we're at least starting to yeah. build Well, up. we'll start to put the money in, I remember, like we did last year. The yeah. town meeting, we put the amount of money in for the, for the two cruises. So how uh, have you had any significant, yeah, either equipment failures, or is there any points of risk that you're aware of on either of the vehicles right well, now? Well, the 89s don't really have. Okay, and the crew sits out in the elements, and that should end up taken off the road. And based on the national standard, anything over 20 years should be off the road anyway. Who generates that national standard? The National Fire Protection Association, NPA, and And the 83, again, is an 83. It's only a two person truck, so it's a wonderful truck with just the efficiency between the age and the staff that can carry makes it. If you were going to pick one of them to replace, just from the safety perspective, would you keep the, the open cab? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You would you keep the open cab? No. No. Oh, you cab. get rid of them. Yeah. You keep the eighty three. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you saw one, say a used one that was in reasonable price and in good condition, you yeah, it would definitely be worth ex exploration, okay. a visit to it, and some references. Yeah. Oh, so that's open for discussion too. So is twenty years the, the amount of time on the vehicle itself, or twenty years of service? 20, they're recommending anything over 20 years not be used at all to be completely different from service. They're, they're, I believe the figure is 15 years if you place a reserve status, which essentially engine 3 is, but the 89 is used regularly. And with the open cap configuration, that's why the lead would be to move on. So you're agreeable just to take if we want to take and vote a certain amount of money into that. And to that, you're agreeable that if we say, for an example, vote done to approve to put, say, 20000 in for one year for this. So we'll have enough <coughs> money in the fleet account. How we usually, you know, we'll put some money into the fleet account. Well, I think 200000 would either be a good step towards, it would either be a final step on a good use fee, assuming that comes along, or a good start on building up a, yeah for, yeah a, if we a, put in like say a certain amount of money so yeah. whatever we have could you do some market research between now and our next meeting to yeah. get an idea of, of how much of one of those that meets pro appropriate specs if there is anything on the new no. yes the, the new is running about half a million okay new is running half used, and the used is two hundred thousand used, used two hundred we may be able to find something really it's market driven Okay. As, as people are able, with the economy coming up, as other departments are able to buy more pieces, that stuff is going on the used market. So. I don't think any of the vehicles that have been in service in almost 20 years. Some, some of them are. Some of them, it's, it's very strange whether it's the department's yeah, reorganizing or becoming annexed or something. We are seeing stuff with only 12 years on it that's being <coughs> sold in good condition. I don't know how they're pulling it off. Peter, I don't know to, 
Both of, both of these vehicles are pumpers? Yes, sir. And so you're looking to go to one? No. Thank Eventually, we'd be replacing both, but the priority would just, well, we'd be just looking at getting replacing one now. Got it. Yeah. And then the old one that has fewer uh, crew members would stay in a reserve and status. Stay in service for as long as prior to one or you know, until we position our place out as well. Okay. So, so Linda, our, vo our board voted no on this because we, I think this needs to be discussed at such a high price, and I think we need to know we more still data. Have, I mean, we still have some more discussion yet on it. This is just to place the article. Well, what and are you placing on the article? Are you placing 200 or are you placing 20 to go into the fleet account? Which, what are you doing here? So, I, I think well, what we're doing is placing the article. We're putting the article on, and I would, what I would like to do is to you know, maybe we could put so much money into the fleet account to build up to buy this, not just buying it this year. That's my idea, because that's what we've done in other years. Because that's not what the way the article was reading right now. It's not. The article I now is reading to get a pumper truck for 200000 uh -huh. No. The way that I, what I would like to do, I would like to put so much money, we'll change the way the article reads, and put so much money into the fleet account to build up so we'll have an amount of money to purchase this maybe another year instead of just coming out with the 200,000. Well, and, and, and I, think that's a, I think that's a good point. I think what, what we want to probably do is take a look at all of the vehicle. If there's yeah. other vehicle purchase requests yeah. in here, yeah. consolidate it into a single yeah. Warren article yeah. um, and then fund it to the extent that we can fund it. Yeah, we'll, well, yeah, we'll put in so much money, like we have other years. But if you put 20000 in this year, we're not going to be able to have enough for next year to get this truck. You know what I mean, Linda? It's only twenty grand. I mean... No, I'm thinking the number one is going to be 100 or 200 Well, that's, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm and thinking. That's how where do you, you, where do you propose to get this money? Yeah, uh, we don't know yet. Right now, I don't know enough to know. And we, no. Okay. What we're looking well, that's why I'm asking the question, Clarence. Yeah just, yeah, just let's get it on the warrant. He's suggesting 200000 we're not done tonight, and we won't be done on doing what we're doing for weeks. Because it can, because the thing can always, you know, if we don't have the money, it can always be pulled off the, our path yeah, over. And I, I think what we do is we, we rephrase this one. My recommendation would be to, to, re, to rephrase this article to be a single fleet account money allocation article, mm -hmm. and then the narrative and the discussion can happen on the town hall floor about what those sums of money will support from a standpoint of What's the bill? this year <coughs> th this year versus a build up in the account yeah. for future year purchases. Yep. And you just appointed that CP CIP the, you just appointed the yeah. capital improvement committee tonight. Right. So right. give them a chance to do their thing. Yeah, right. their thing. exactly. Okay. But I think we do this as a generic one for what will be all the vehicle articles that are probably somewhere buried in this packet. Yeah, we figure out. We figure out once we close the the year and get our free cash numbers back, what is a reasonable amount of money to place in our fleet repair replacement account, and then we get with the department heads. That's prior we do. Yes, pr we prioritize do. Yeah. which. Yeah. Once we have our free cash, the free cash yeah. is going in on Friday right, to get to certified, <clears throat> and then once we know what we're getting back on our free cash, then we will know what we can actually put into these different. Because yeah, you've got, you got quite a stack here of, of dollars and cents yeah. here. So you're going to rewrite this article then? So we're going to pass over this for now? Or how are you going to do this? Uh, I think that probably the way it would read is to see if the town will vote to raise appropriate transfer borrow a sum of money to the fleet repair replacement account or take any action relative thereto. Right. Would be how it that, Okay. I'm, I'm, you guys then, good and, with that? And then yes. we go through... Right. And and figure okay. out what is going to support that and incorporate it into the motion. Okay, I'm I'm in agreement with that. You guys, everybody yeah, good on yeah, that? That's where I want to have. Okay. It right. Like that. Tell me, can do they can we do some more research? I'll, okay. I'll write it out. Okay. Right now. Okay. So that'll be 19. Okay, now. No, I'm not going to put any dots. So no you don't, numbers. You don't, you don't no, want a number. Unless need, it's a citizen's petition, we don't, petition, need we don't right. have to put the dollars we have, in the motion. We have to know. We have to know where the money is coming from first. <clears throat> okay, now the next one also is another one from the fire department, and it's to, uh, this will be number 20. It's to borrow a, to transfer borrow a sum of money to purchase protective clothing, air tanks, air packs for the fire department. And the request for that is 15000 
And now, is this something that we do every year? Is this the same article? Well, we have been, and we've been doing what we've been upgrading the protective clothing, the helmets, etc. Um, that account with what we had in it, um, we've been using that to buy the PP that we were told that we should have, and so we've been doing that since that first policy came out. We've been using on that. Well, we, we rescinded that policy last week until after the town meeting right. mm -hmm. to see if we get the money to buy this, to buy all of these, what we need. Right. My thought was that the policy was put in place, and the thought behind that policy, basically a mission statement, was very well thought out. Then it was only revoked because of a money issue, but from a personal liability standpoint, I had money in the account where I could execute that policy. So if I just sat back and said, well, no, I'm not going to do everything I can, waiting on maybe getting funds, it, it put me in kind of a, in a bad place. So we're going ahead with that. It's only pushing us off a little bit. <coughs> One of the positives, too, is right now we have three members that have completed paperwork for application, and they're going to need a year, a year or so. And then we still have, we're finishing up the current cycle of air bottles that we need to replace. In the next couple of years, we'll be starting that cycle afresh, and that'll be like uh, 15 years lifespan on those. So it'll be quite a few years. So once we can, this will probably be the last year of that degree of a figure. Maybe after that, we'll just create a separate line just for an ongoing thing, especially in lieu of the policy and where we're going from that. But you know, protective clothing, we're talking for a complete ensemble from helmets to boots, almost $4,000 per person. Air bottles, about $1,000. Put air packs on there. Air packs are probably about six thousand dollars. We're pursuing. We have a grant pending in front of us right grant. now for that, as well as for a forestry truck. But the odds on that are as good as anybody's. The, they receive billions of dollars in requests, and they only get a few million to, to grant. So it's a, it's a shot on that one. But again, probably one more. If we get a boom of applications and people want to come forward to join, great. Uh, but. In the absence of that, this will probably be the last year where we're looking at a figure in excess of 10,000. For the last couple, we've done 20, but we had a, a number of years where we were replacing a lot of air bottles over that course of a year, 1,000 each. So, How many air bottles did you said you had two left to replace this year, three right? three in calendar 17, and then I think we're good. And there's a couple in calendar 19. So, but it's a, the clothing is the big thing. Bottles, you see, yeah, we're gonna have a reprieve for two years, you said. Yeah, we, we've got a couple of years off, so just maintaining some on there. We're not, you know, we can probably skate for a while after this. Turn the motion to put this on there. <coughs> second that. All in, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Somebody want to entertain a motion to accept? Not accept. The next one Who's going to hang on, Linda? Anybody oh, going to okay. second that? Second. second. Okay, all in favor? Done. Okay. Okay, now the next one also is uh, was number eight, and we're going to have it as 21. And this is another one to uh, some purchase from the fire department to purchase a thermal image cap camera. <clears throat> and uh, that will, he has additional information for this, but right now he has a cost of 5000 on this. Now, what is the in additional information you have on this? <coughs> oh, wait a minute. Do I, I, I entertain yeah. 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 the motion, motion to put this on? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, 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 wait. Discussion. Okay, discussion. we're going to have discussion. Background on that, uh, thermal imaging cameras have come way down in price. The first one we bought, we, uh, the town didn't spend a dime on that. We got a federal grant for the majority of it, and then the association kept in the last couple. That's several years, several years old. The technology is about 20 years old, and it's the only one we have. Whereas each group of firefighters going in to the building should have access to one, and we only have one where we can put two or three teams in. Having two is a good way to do it in our case. And of the two primary pumpers, we only have one with it. So there are cases where if that truck goes on the call, they have to get it out of the other truck, depending on the call, depending on the staffing. So we're upgrading the technology. It's smaller, it's a good tactical unit. And again, the original one was 13,000 and change. They've come down. You can get a good working, workable tactical unit for 5,000. Did you tell this board what, what the camera actually does when you're on a fire? 
it's a thermal image. If you've seen the specials on t uh, TV, it shows the differences in heat. You look through the screen, you can make out outlines based on heat signatures. You can find heat fire hidden walls, behind walls, behind objects. You can also make out persons <coughs> in a burning building where you have no visibility otherwise, just because of the heat signature and the differences in heat that the machine picks up. It can, it can, it can determine a person from a flame. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the different temperatures. Yeah, so, yeah the floor would be a certain the floor may only be a you know, couple hundred flame would be you know, 1018, and the body would be different. So you, based on the difference of the gradient of heat, you can make out images. How often have you used the current one you have in the last 12 months? Oh, beat me to the punch, Steve. Probably <laughs> every structure fire, so we're probably 10 times on that alone, and then in other cases, you have somebody, you know, they had uh, an electrical malfunction. We want to check everything. We have somebody who, uh, just a couple months ago, their they stove, they couldn't shut it off. We dragged that outside, and then we're checking the walls around the cabinets. All that. You can use it to determine how much propane is in a tank if it's leaking. You know, we've used it to search the woods after a motor vehicle accident. If it was concerned that somebody was either ejected or fled. So probably 20 plus times in a, in a calendar year. The one we have still works, right? You say the one we have, but it's the only one we have. And again, the technology is 20 years old, so we're getting to the point that any failure on it may not be supported by the manufacturer. So we're just looking to stay ahead of that. How old is the unit itself? Five years old, you said. I'm sorry. How old is the unit itself? Oh, the unit itself is nine years old. I understand that we want the one, but I just I think if if we're rolling out something that's going to need that, you're probably going to roll. I'm just waiting. This is a lot of stuff. I'm just trying to figure out. Okay, do we have a motion to put it on? Aye. Someone want to entertain a motion to accept this? I'll make that motion. Somebody yeah. want to second it? Any, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Now, we support that, Linda. You support that? All right, now, nine, which is going to be 22, this is, uh, this goes on every year. This is um, from, uh, comes from the ambulance receipts to, um, to fund the ambulance expense accounts. I actually have a question about this one. It also appears in the block Does it appear articles. And it, it has, like, and it has for many, many years. And I'm wondering block? if we don't need to just... Either move it out of the block or it is in the block. We do the same thing every year, but see, we have to have the money amount in there, so this is why we leave it here. Right. So I'm just well, wondering. The other ones, I'm wondering know, if we should just move it out of the block voting. Since no, it's not in the block voting. We do mm -hmm. these separate every year because we we need the money. We, we have right. to have the money figure, so this is why we leave them like this. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a entertain a motion? Yeah, we have a motion. Yeah. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Dave? Yeah, we approved this. Yeah, this is just a right. standard right. thing. Okay. We approved okay. it last night. Okay, and then, and then 10, which will be 23, it's the same thing to approve the ambulance wages that come out. It's the same thing. We just need the figure from the ambulance receipt. Okay. You have a motion. I'll have a motion to put that on. Second. All in favor? Aye. We approved that last night as well. Okay. The next one is, will be 24. It was 11. And this is from the uh, water department. To transfer the sum of money in the amount of 39000 from the water surplus account to the new vehicle purchase account. You have a motion. Yeah. I'd like to entertain the motion. I have. You have. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. And this um, comes. I do. I do recommend <coughs> one um, change, though, is it should go to fleet repair replacement accounts. Mm. We don't have a new vehicle. No, no, no. This account. comes out. No, this it's comes water. out of their their own water surplus account, so okay. we don't have to put that in. But do, do they have a new vehicle purchase account already established in our accounting? No idea. We'll have to check that out. But see, they have the money in the water surplus account, so we don't have to put this money into the fleet account. It's just a transfer from that account. 
they have a hundred thousand in your piggy yeah. bank. Right, I understand. No, I understand. Oh, that. okay. I'm just, I'm just talking. I'm talking procedurally, and maybe okay. maybe I'm just confused because typically, um, it, typically all of the purchases come out of fleet repair replacement, yeah, but but, yeah. but that's yeah. their separate fund. Yeah, it's a separate fund. It's a separate. Right. But you can you could you could fund that. You can fund fleet repair replacement from basically any funding source, including this. But if but you don't want to, if you don't want to commingle the funds, no, they don't want to commingle the funds. Okay. And I wouldn't suggest. Uh, well, the water no. department is separate. We yeah. can't. So, so, separate right, but they, anyway. they don't. We may want to just double check the phrasing on this because you might not but need what to you establish do, though, the you, account. But what you do if you do establish this new account, all of this comes around after town meeting is over and we this is accepted at town meeting and this shows up in what you call your appropriations sheets mm -hmm. that we have that we have a new vehicle purchase account so this account okay. is accepted at town meeting okay does it indicate that's truck forward drive is that a I don't know I don't know we'll, we'll have to get some more we're going to discuss that in a minute here yeah. we got some information yeah. on last night um they got uh they had some bids for two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. Um, the uh, two-wheel drive, which is what they've been using right along, um, the truck they're replacing just passed inspection. I don't know what the replacement is, but, uh, but anyway, um, that comes in at thirty thousand. That's what the government fleet concession built into it, uh, twenty-nine million two zero. Uh, for the four-wheel drive option, which is what they want to do, um, after the fleet concession comes in at thirty-three four forty-eight. I did notice, uh, you know, these are not invoices, these are just estimates from the dealer, and this one they didn't include their nefarious estimation delivery fee, which they'll probably make sure they have one later, so probably not going to be uh, like a, a 34, 7, 4, 3. Um, so th that's the difference between the two, um, but I, I believe they're not planning on plowing roads with it, like that, so I don't understand the, the need for a motor drag vehicle over a two-wheel drag. So probably the only reason is that is that during bad weather, if they have to get up to the wellheads <coughs> and Draper Street is not plowed yet, um, which is one of the pri private roads, and I'm not, I'm not saying it's just, I'm just saying is that there are times when I when they do have to go in areas with that truck where it might not be a bad idea. I don't know if they've had any problems though. So does anyone know if, if uh, I mean, water's gotten stuck? Bob, you're in the water department. To, to get to the pump station, mm -hmm. if you get 15 inches of snow, they're not driving down to a no. two-wheel drive. No, they need Thank a four-wheel. I was just yeah. going to say that's that the, myself. Well, I was, yeah, that, that's what, and that's what I was saying is that it's, it's, four-wheel or not, you're not going to get through there. Mm -hmm. You're saying you're not going to get there with a four. You're not going to go through 15 inches of snow, four-wheel or two-wheel. Well, yeah, but with well, we have such we, we, we have such a good job of getting our roads plowed. Why would we need a four wheel drive vehicle? That's not what I said. Yeah, well, that's yeah, no, that's. I I think actually you're saying two separate things. So what Herb's saying is that under some adverse conditions, that you can't currently get there with the two wheel drive. You can get there with a four wheel drive. Yeah, you can. Um, which would be the advantage. Not if it's not if How much was the difference between the two trucks? So is that what they're thinking of? Is that yeah, what I mean, I just, I, I, I don't know how many times in the past, you know, 20 years that we've run this problem, but I mean, you know, just, that, that, was, that was the one thing that, that we were discussing. Is, now, this 39,000, is this for a two-wheel or a four-wheel? He translated it as a four-wheel. If, 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 if his numbers are correct, he got up to 34, 34 for four-wheel. There's some, I'm sure, taking a box off the old to put it on the okay. new. That's why it's thirty nine thousand. Okay. Yeah. Is that what the water and actually, department? Actually, I, yeah, I thought the biggest issue was the box is rusted. It's all yeah, the, included the, on both. The, 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 the box, box is pretty the much whole thing. Yeah. This is seven thousand seven thousand seven hundred thirty five for the new box on the truck when they get it. So, Bobby, is this what you guys want? Well, we never had to have a four wheel drive in the history of Brookville. Well, then why do we have this? Yeah, uh, but he, we both first voted that. Uh, we would go with the two-wheel drive, we were two to one. And then one, one member changed his mind, he wanted to go back to the four-wheel drive. So, so the water department it was two to one the other way for the yeah. four-wheel drive. That's the four -wheel. But, and you have money in your account. Yeah, and, and, and all the, I've, been, I've been on the board as a commissioner for 17 years, and so we've never had, had a problem with the two-wheel drive. Herb was here, do you have, 
You want to add to this? I just, I just want to say that you know the water department is supposed to be self-sufficient. That's so I keep hearing yeah. off and on quite a bit here. It is. It is. Then why is the highway department doing stuff for the water department, plowing their roads and everything else during the winter time for them to get to their wells and so on and so forth? You do the schools. We're contracted to the school. No, you, you're part of the so whole I'm entire so, town. So you're saying then that they should have a plow on this to plow their own road? They, they should be, you know, if they want to, the new person that's here, mm -hmm. he wants to be self-sufficient. He's trying to be that way. Yeah. The highway department supplements the water department all the time. Mm -hmm. The one's <clears throat> That's just, awesome. Historically, that's gone back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. It has for years. Yeah. Could you help the, one another out over the years? Right. Mm -hmm. The new person does not have so the, the water, experience. So the water breaks and the highway take care of that. Who plows for the uh, recycling center? That's a question. Well, what do you think? The highway. Okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm just bringing that into the conversation here. I'm just bringing it into the conversation, that's all. So the recommendation of the water department is what? This article? Or no? it's a four -wheel Do they drive. want this with a four-wheel drive? Yes. Is this yeah, what they voted for two-wheel drive. And, they, and, and, they, voted but the, but and the, they voted for four. They voted for four, so the water department is re recommending this article as is. Yes. We have a motion on the floor to accept what the water department has suggested. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we voted for the two wheels, so I don't know if you guys That's want to change fine. the vote. No. Okay. No. Uh, Probably when you guys are drafting the warrant, if you want to draft it that way or you want we'll to just say that we didn't just, agree. Well, right. just indicate that we're supporting it at 39000 and that the advisory is supporting right. it at 34000 which would be 30. Or 30 or whatever 30. covers yeah. the But two the thing is, I mean, if this is, I mean, they don't really have to appropriate the money, but it's just a transfer out of their, their own. I totally get it, though. They're, they're, you could make an argument, and here's where, here's where I can play devil's advocate on either side of this argument is, or discussion. It's not an argument, but at least quite curious. Um, is that um, we have some fairly significant potential capital expenditures coming up that are going to face the water department sometime in the next 10 years. Um, and $5,000 now might be helpful down the road. So I, I can understand, you know, somebody saying, hey, we want to go with the less expensive option. I can also see some good reasons with the variability of our winter weather and, and such to, that four-wheel drive is overall safer for the operator and can get them places that, that they <coughs> need to go. So oh, I say they should have the four. I agree they should have the four-wheel drive. No. But, uh, but it is their it is their money to spend as they see it fit, is, yes. and if they want, and, if, and they if spend, it was two to one the other direction, then and they, they spend it very. They them. always spend their money very wisely. They don't yep. spend it foolishly. Okay, we'll move on. One now. thing I will say, Linda, is just because we have the money in town or they have the money in the piggy bank, doesn't mean we could should spend the most expensive. You know. We just voted because we went and we asked Robert, Bob Barnes, we asked him what the past history was, the history of the trucks that they've had through the years, and he but said it was too wheel. But if the thing came up, though, I mean, if it wasn't yeah. plowed, and he had to get through and check the wells down there, you know, he's got to get down to check them. Okay, now we're going to move on. <clears throat> Articles from the highway department, and 12 will be numbered as 25. And it's to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 15000 to plow <coughs> private roads or take any action relative there to. You have Herb? a motion. I, will, I entertain a motion. Second. We and we have discussion. Same every year. Well, actually, it's a change this year because yeah, it's, it's, no, it's well, so, a so usually, usually it's a dollar. I a think dollar. that I suspect this is trying to make a point. Of, is this based off of what you think the actual I cost is? I was asked to take and put some information together and what the approximate cost. And so, so of what we spend on snow and ice, mm -hmm. about fifteen grand of it is due to private roads. Yes. Right. Okay. And this is not that we're taking that away. We're just making sure people know what we're spending. People know. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, actually my one que and, and actually my one question would be if we're allocating it that way are we reducing snow and ice by a consummate amount for the year or not 
Actually, we can't because under Mass General Law, we can't reduce it. So I This is education. That's yeah. all this is. Okay, but this is just to let people know how much money that we spent on plowing the private roads. That's fine. And someone could amend it to a dollar, and if they want yeah. to do that, they can they do can. that. Oh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. So now our board, we went back to the one dollar because what you're saying here now, it's saying raise and appropriate fifteen thousand. So that's what you're saying to the townspeople is you're allocating fifteen thousand out of the budget. That's yep. what you're saying. Yep. yep. Now you just said it was for educational purposes. That's not true. Fifteen thousand to be appropriated means it's fifteen thousand more going in. We are this 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 dollar amount is already coming out of the snow and ice. This this figure here is already coming out of it. And we know that the private roads cost more than a dollar, but the only reason yeah. the dollar is there is to make it legal. We have to do this to make it legal. And you can stand up a town meeting and amend this to one dollar, David, and go to it. There was criticism made earlier this year of what it was what what was it costing us. We did an analysis mm -hmm. as to what it's costing. We're educating the town's folks. Yeah. But you're, you're also, what you're doing, Clarence, you're, not, you're also educating them, but you also are raising and appropriating $15,000 more yeah. dollars. And, 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 not until the motion and passes. And that's going to come out of the budget. Okay. Not until the motion so, passes. So, so first of all, I'd say transfer and borrow, just because I'm a big fan of we never limit ourselves to raise and appropriate. Okay. The second piece of it is, is um, if we can, I can probably find the records on it or we can, because I don't want to bother the accountant where they're trying to close the year. But we run over snow and ice pretty consistently, somewhere between twenty-five thousand and thirty-five thousand dollars each year. By doing raise and appropriate against the plowing private roads, it gives us clarity about where some of that money is coming from, and that account should get emptied before we ever deficit spend a dollar on snow and ice. So I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing from a standpoint. Now here's the good thing. If we, have a, if we have a year where we don't spend as much plowing, these funds from an accounting perspective, we can reduce in other years much easier than we can snow and ice because Mass General Law says if we raise the snow and ice account, we can't ever put it back down unless we don't spend to that amount. The, the statistical likelihood of us never spending to that amount doesn't. This gives us the flexibility to have the money set aside and have a little bit of fiscal discipline because we know we're going to spend it anyway. But then if we don't spend it, we can roll it over the following year or do a transfer at special town meeting at the end of the year because for some reason we didn't get a bunch of weather in this coming year and, and have those funds accessible. So honestly, I think this is actually a good practice. I don't agree with that because this money, why, why are you singling out private roads? Why don't we get a fund for the main main roads in town? We'll put a set a separate account for them. No. This 15000 the private roads is all part of us plowing roads. It's all built into the snow and ice. The whole thing. All our roads are put into the snow and ice. All of it. And the 15,000 is because certain individuals and towns don't want to see our private roads plowed. And you're trying to put a figure on that. You shouldn't do that. It's in the snow and ice. The plow the private roads is in the snow and ice. So, so back when Bev Lund was selectman, that's all I know. So what period of time was that? What, what do you, what's the question? Oh, and when that was the last time we didn't plow private roads? And there was a period of time. Seven years ago. About seven years ago. No, it was, I'm going to give you a little history on that. That's when, when Mr. Schaefer came in on board, he didn't want to plow, plow private roads. And this did not get put in because I got the petition. Oh, yeah. I got the petition going to get it back because we didn't plow private roads one year because we didn't appropriate it. And I'm the one that got a petition to make sure so, that so, we plow so, private so, roads. So deep breath. You have to put a dollar in okay, to make so it legal. It, so let's put a dollar. So let's do this. Let's put a dollar on the operational budget so that it happens. Okay. That's so, what we do, no, we've no, been no, doing. No, no. Let's let's put a dollar on the operational yeah. budget so that you know we will because when we vote through the line items, yeah. you know that we're making the commitment at the one dollar level to plow private roads. But this is not a referendum on whether or not we're going to plow private roads. That's not the point of this, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, or at least that's not what I'm hearing is the point of this. What I'm, what I'm understanding is that what we're letting the townspeople know that we're spending, what we spend is 15000 to plow the private roads. I think that's a good thing, and I think we should have the math available to the townspeople at town meeting mm -hmm. to explain that number. And I don't but think that's a bad thing. But that's good. The education is good to the townspeople mm -hmm. if they want to know about private roads. But you're saying in this article, raise and appropriate fifteen thousand. That means it's coming out of the budget. Yeah. So that's different than educating them. Saying you're saying two so, different things here. So no. 
The 15 is already in the Snow and Ace account. Or we you can know? word it to it say that we're going to, it'll come out of the Snow and Ice account. To what? 08. Back in 08? Yeah, $1. Mm -hmm. That's when we got. Before they charge nothing. Yep. But mm -hmm. it's always been there. Yeah, we got to. So I, you know. I think we should just. Move. We'll, we'll be discussing. Privately. Okay, I, I so made my point. Well, you made your point. You well, no, well, I just well, wanted just from the okay, advisory we'll point move, of view. So, okay, we'll just move I the question to, so we right. don't sit here discussing. I wanted to make our point because we got to. We'll come back again and discuss well, and the money amount. Right, and well, the other thing is, is we could actually just put it on there as raise appropriate transfer, borrow a sum of money. And then have the motion have it if, if we don't want Yeah, because these are just figures that are put in. This is yeah. all that they do is put in figures. We have to still figure out where these monies are still coming from when we get. But Linda, you're can. still raising and appropriate it out of the budget is my point. Mm -hmm. Or we could rephrase it and say it's going to come out of the snow and ice money. It's doing that now. Why are we changing this? That's yes, what I want to know. Yes, but what it is, I think, is to tell the people, Dave, just how much money is spent on snow and ice. Okay, we'll do a separate thing then. Do a separate flyer at the town meeting then. But right now you're telling me that we're raising appropriate fifteen thousand extra dollars. That's but it my doesn't point. mean. Yep. We just want to tell yep. the town. We just. We put the town yeah. Newspaper, you know? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's just fifteen thousand more out of our budget. I mean, this budget no, is getting out of hand. No, it's not fifteen thousand more out of the budget. It's fifteen thousand. Of course, it is. You're raising it's going to come out of the snow and ice money, day. You're raising it. It's already in the budget. It's in the snow and ice account. If this is raised and appropriated, does it suddenly become a line item? In the in the highway department's mm -hmm. budget, so when they plow no. my road, mm -hmm. private road, <clears throat> he's going to take so as the, a, as the, a warrant the, the hundred dollars out of that. So so as a warrant article, yeah. it it creates its it, an individual usually, and it depends on how <clears throat> this account handles it. Yep. It would create a separate accounting line <clears throat> that they could fund a portion of the payroll out of. And then it would be up to the highway department to to designate what percentage of the the payroll that they were submitting for that particular week, what would come out of highways regular budget, what comes out of snow and ice, and then what would come out of this fund. So in essence, they would start to be able to capture the hours. And if there was particular expenses, I'll give give you an example. If they bust a plow because they run into some nasty pothole on a poorly maintained private road. We could capture the expenditure of that repair on that separate line item. It doesn't necessarily get baked into the budget, and it won't necessarily exist in the following year because, as a warrant article, instead of as a as a budgetary line item in the ops budget, it gives a separation from the funds that they're running from their standard highway budget. So it's a good tracking mechanism if we actually apply some discipline to how the money is spent out of that account. Well, so do we have faith in our highway department's ability to have the discipline and the, that, that sounds very complex to me, following all these line items. Yeah. That's, all right, uh, we could talk this to death for the okay. night. So why don't we well, just bring this up again? 15 grand. Right. We'll, we'll bring this up again. I just don't, I don't know why. It's it's I don't know why it's you're making a raising a poor. Well, we can still we can put it on, but we can pass it over, Dave. We can talk this all night long. We've got uh, other can, articles can to I, go through. All right. Can I, put, can I make a motion on this yet? Why don't we just put it on just how it is at town meeting? I'll make a motion that we put it back to a dollar, and we'll leave it as that. We want to make sure the town's people understand this is what it costs to do private ways. In the town of yeah, that's period. what it is. It, it just gives the people the idea. It's, you know, it's yeah. pretty cut and dry here. We don't need to argue move, this. Now move, the, move the question. Okay, let's, let's move no, it. No, no, I'm not trying to argue. For, I'm just, I understand your point here, but just put it. If you, if you want to notify on. everybody, mm. put it in the citizen there. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to, um, All right. to 13, which is actually 26 now. Oh, you're taking each of these separately? Okay. Yeah, yeah separate. we're taking okay. them separate. Okay, and good the next one also is to vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 35000 to fund the road construction and reconstruction or take any action. This is the one that we, it's, I think it's the same amount, isn't it, every year, Herb? Yes, it is. It is. It's, yeah. a, it's an annual thing that goes on. So I would like to make, 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 make a, a motion. motion to put I'll it on. second it. All in favor? Uh, we uh, supported that as well. Okay. Next was 14, it was 27. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of seventy-five hundred for centerline painting of town roads, or take any action relative thereto. I made the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any discussion? Aye. No. Okay. We'll um, I do. Just, just if we can make sure, Karen, in the in the drafting of the warrant, 
and, and I don't know if you guys want to blanket vote this, is to go ahead and anything that currently says um, raise appropriate currently says raise an appropriate ad transfer and borrow to yeah. it. Oh, yes, she will. Yes, yeah, she right. does well, that. It, it, some years it has gotten missed and it has kind of tied our hands as to exactly oh, how okay. we fund. Well, no, she will. She'll put that, but we won't yeah. put a money when that when we post the warrant. It won't have a money in it. We right. don't put the money right. into right. it. Right. We'll, we'll say raise appropriate to borrow. Okay. Uh, the next one, which was 15, is 28. We, um, we approved that oh, as well. Approve it, I'm sorry. We supported that one as well. Okay. Okay, now the next one was 15, which would be 28. To see if the town will vote to transfer $2,750 from the general fund to the fleet repair account or take any action therefore. There too. This is too far. This money was obtained from the sale of the 1980 Mack truck. So you have a motion. We have, do you have a motion Second. to put it on? Uh, any discussion? All nope. in favor? Aye. Aye. So I do have a question about it, though. You know, I should, before we voted it, I should have asked the question, which is those funds, was that current year? The funds that were received for the sales, that current year? It just come in this year, yes. Yes. Um, have we screened that with either the accountant or the, or? or council as to whether we can move those funds this year before it's actually been cleared through free cash? We might not be able to do that. The check should be already in. I, I know that the check is there, but th there's some complexities behind the municipal accounting where you can't right. always well, we take something that's the first year. Yeah. So it's we'll something to get lost. We, 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 we need to We will check, check with, with Carrie and town council on this. Yeah. Now we, get a, we have a question um, for her. We, you said at a meeting that both trucks were sold. Have, where's the other check for the other truck? The other truck's still sitting at the garage. Did we get a check for it? or? No. Nope. I thought it was sold. It didn't. We've already went through Miss a bit on it all. Miss a bit went after the guy that supposedly bought it. He can no longer do anything with Miss a bit, so he's all done. And we were told to re advertise, and we're re advertising now. Okay, that's what the board wanted to know. So, are you guys all good with that now? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we supported this as well. Okay, now we're going to move on. Uh, 16 is 29. This is to see the town will transfer $18,724.72 from the general fund to the fleet repair and replacement account or take any action. This is the reimbursement which was received from FEMA from the uh, January 26, 2015 blizzard. You have a motion? I would Second. like to have a motion to put this on the line. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we voted to do the same, but we'd like to see this if, if hear me out here. We wanted to see if we can get this on the special, and we want to return it back into the snow and ice, the deficit of the snow and ice, so we can take it off the top. We know this came in from other FY years, but we don't know if we can take get at the special. We can do that. We can take it off this year's deficit of snow and ice. I don't know. Just so instead of putting front. so instead of putting the money in the fleet account, you want to use this to take the deficit off the snow and ice account. That's correct. Is that what this? That's what this money was. We used. We used this. We spent this money for for plowing roads. Am I right? Yeah. So we should. We think we should put it back into the deficit of the snow and ice stuff this year, but we can't do it at the annual, but we can do it at the special. Am I, am I correct on talking like that? Well, again, we may run into the same thing where if, it, if the check was received this year, we may not even have the option to move it. That's way. why we said the special. No, but no, but I'm, I'm telling you, it's the same problem as the vehicle piece of it. Is right, I understand special, that. Even at the special, the, the special is when that we, year, we, may, we might not be able to apply to anything until it's been processed through the free cash process. This is another one we'll have to talk to the town council yeah. about. Yeah, because we've done this type of stuff before, but it has to be done at the special. Mm. So when we have to review. Yeah, we're going to review this one. Okay, so all right. But for we, now, it's on. Yeah, for now, for now it's on. So we're going to talk to Carrie about it? Yeah. yeah, we're going to talk okay. to Carrie about it. Now we're going to move on to <coughs> 17, which was to 30. Uh, to see if the town will raise and appropriate 
$58,900 to replace the 1997 Ford one-ton are taken in action. Balance in the fleet repair is $24,961.90 and transfers from the general fund from above would bring it up to $46,436.69. So we wouldn't actually have to appropriate, I mean, that whole sum, if we do do what he wants us to do in the other articles, uh, yeah, all we would have to do would be 12000 to appropriate. So you got, you got a motion to put it on? I would like to have a, put a motion to uh, put yeah, this on. motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Oh, wait a second. Though we want, they're going to take the sum out, though, correct? So it would just be a sum. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. a sum. It will, yeah, it will come out. The sum does come up. They yeah. just put this in so yep. we would know okay. what we need. They yep, need then you have a second. Yep. And then it's basically 12 grand. Yeah, 12 grand. That's all truck. 12 that they would need. Okay, what our board decided last night, and I'm going to give you a little history on this truck and the whole <laughs> equipment process here in our town. Uh, we voted no <laughs> for starters as a board, and I'm going to tell you why. If you remember, back in the day, we had two one-ton trucks. The 1997 was to be replaced because the highway department came before this town and said the guys can't sit in the truck because the seat belts are no good, the doors are going to fall off and they're going to fall out of the truck and we need a new truck immediately. Okay? So we went and bought another new, new one-ton truck, which was fine. Everyone was on board with it. Um, the truck was stripped down and the cemetery wanted this truck. They were going to use it just for hauling dirt and brush around the cemetery. Um, so the highway department says, well, we're going to keep it now. So if you look back in the history and we, how much money we've spent on this truck since we've kept this truck, this truck was supposed to be junked or given to the cemetery. Now we've got three one tons. Now we're going to take this truck and, and replace it with another one. So we're going to have three one ton trucks in this town. That's unacceptable. That truck was supposed to be junked or given to the cemetery. That was the agreement that we had. When was this? Won't this be the second time we're replacing the truck? Yes, we replaced this 97 with another new truck that they are driving now. Now we're replacing another truck with this truck again. So what I'm just letting the townspeople know is we we're now we have three, have, we've had three one tons, but the original agreement was that truck was to be junked or the cemetery was just to use it off-road until it died down at the cemetery. When was that? When was that done? Whenever we got the last truck. What's when your newest we, truck down there, Herbie? Five years old. What? What is it? An old twelve? It's five years old. Okay, around an old twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah. And, what, the, and to clarify the cemetery issue. Yes. The cemetery commissioners knew nothing about that truck, and they told the selectmen no, they did not want it. Okay, that's that's not so, what I was told. I I talked to them directly, and they wanted it. All right, so that's here with there, but the, the, the bottom line is, do we want to keep, continue keeping three one-ton trucks down there? I guess that's the, we because original. all the time. Well, that's why we voted no, because this truck was replaced with the old 12 five years ago. Now we're replacing this truck again with another new truck. I mean, how many trucks are we going to need down here in this town highway van? So anyway, that's a little history. Just that's a little history of this truck. If the town wants to buy another truck, that's fine. But I want them to know the history. So you have right. a motion on the floor we, to accept. We have a motion to accept it. Yes. Where do you plan on getting the money for this? We, we will, talk to the voters. We we talk to the voters, and we have to see what we're getting back from free cash. Yeah. Okay. We don't know yet. There's a lot of money coming out and a lot of things coming out of free cash. Well, we don't know yet, Dave. We got to we got to so, see if we're no, no, going I, to I understand that. We'll pass them over until the fall. I understand that. So right now we're just going to put them on. Okay. Well, our board voted no, so we didn't support it. Okay. Now we're going on to 18, which is 31 now, to see if the town will vote to raise 39,000 to purchase a generator for the highway bridge. <clears throat> you have a motion. Have a motion to put this on. I'll second for discussion. Any, any yep. discussion? Bert, what's, the, what's the reason? The, uh, the generator that's done at the highway garage was a used generator that we that was donated to the highway department at the time. Yes, what's the, what's the kilowatt capability of it? How the one that we got there right now? Yeah. 
That's 35, I think it is, and it's too small for the build. Really? Oh, yeah. It won't run the whole build. What are you trying to run off of it? Well, we, we got air compressors, welders that we got to run occasionally. And the air compressor, when it does kick on, it uh, kills the generator. We found that out the other day when we lost power. Okay, so the 39,000 is based off of someone doing the load balance calculation. Yes, correct. So what size generator does it's that? It's up around a 50 kW. <clears throat> and how frequently have you guys had to leverage the generator during, like, outages? That generator has run three or four times over the past few years with power outages and stuff. And uh, just to let you know that building is a uh, the second. Uh, that building actually holds several roles within public safety. It's the backup EOC. It's listed with the federal government as an emergency dispensing, dispensing site. It's listed with the state uh, office of public health as our emergency dispensing and vaccination site. And in those cases where it does lose power, generally the reason for the loss of power in this area would end up resulting in the highway department going to work. Uh, be it by windstorms, etc. So that building, that being a, that building being able to stand alone during a general power outage is rather important. No, I I get it. In the state, in the federal government, the state does have, they do call me every so often and ask me questions over the phone. When, how quick can we get set up and get going to open up the building? Okay. Are there any things that are currently running off of that that are not habitually in use when you're operating the garage? Like you said that the air compress is the Correct. air compressors that you say that's air killing air compressors tied into it? Yeah. <clears throat> But when the power went out that day that we lost power there for a while, yeah. we forgot to shut the air compressor off. In order to run the generator. Right. You know, sometimes we get the, if everything turns on the right way, the, the, everything will run together, but it, it'll kill it. Is this, this generator, okay, based, now you just gave us some new information about the emergency, that's fine. I understand that now. But basically, on the emergency point of view for the town residents, Basically, we need just basic electricity and lights. We don't need an air compressor running at that time. Am I right? How old is the generator, too? I have no idea, Dave. Okay. Like I said, I got it. Somebody gave it to us from town here, and it ran and everything else. It's off of natural gas. He said it was quite old when he had it. Mm -hmm. So. So for the purposes of the meeting, we're going to put the sum of money there. <coughs> you board want to stick to what we voted, or you want to be? We voted no. Do you want to stick with it, or you want to? Okay. Okay, now we're going to move on to 19, which is 32 now. Um, to see if the town will vote to raise, appropriate, or borrow 6000 to purchase a welding, air, recycler, and a storage cabinet for flammable <coughs> liquids. You have a motion to do that. have a motion to put Second. this on? Herb came up and talked to me about this last week. And if I remember right, he says none of these are, you just found out that they all should have their own separate storage unit to put these in, right? The uh, gasoline and stuff? Yeah. That's sitting on the floors around yeah. the highway garage? Yeah, he said they have to be in. They, they should be in they a storage be area. In a storage area, yeah. We got to talk. So, yeah. We got caught, so we have to definitely, I feel, put this one on. So I have a motion to put this on. <coughs> we got caught. Any discussion on it? No. No, I'm going to do it. All in favor? It's I, against the law. Yeah, we've got to get it. We have to do it. Okay, we supported this as well. We just wanted to know if, 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 if you got exact cost on the two items yet. You got it right there. Okay, that's what that's what the cost come up to, 6000 Okay. Did Cindy uh, fill out that form in the procedure book, a CAD or whatever the hell it's called? There's a form she's got to she's got to fill out. Like talk wow. something out of the procedure book. I think it's the CAD form. If I'm pronouncing sure. it. Okay, I'll get your form then. It's out of the book. Okay. okay. Uh, we support this. If I could just to change some language, should should we? Is the board in favor that we should have such cabinets for gasoline storage? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Can we change the figure to have a fire department to that? Because we have a the sanding, we have cans of five gallon gasoline on the floor just in storage. It's you know, safely located, but it's not, <coughs> it's not you go, please. Yeah, we're, we're, yes, I remember we were talking about safety equipment. Yeah. Yeah. How much of the 6,000 is welding air recycler and how much of it is storage cabinet? The, you don't need to double it. What's that? The air recycler is uh, right around 6,000, a little over $6,000. I think it was 6,000 and change. But it's got the storage cabinet there as well. You got the cab, yeah. yeah. The cabinet. So how much is that? The storage cabinet is right around 1,200. 1,200? Yes. <clears throat> so the, the sum's going to come out anyway. The sum's going to come out of the warrant article statement anyway. So we don't can, know. Can, we get, can, can, can six thousand on the he thing? Might have yeah. Six thousand. I my paperwork. It could be a little less. It could be a little bit more. So my recommendation would be just get this get this sum out of there. Yeah, yeah, so let's get the sum out. Let's get it in the motion. The, the, well, we'll get the, the sum. Uh, the air recycler for the wall. So we'll know more when we actually sit down a second time. We'll know our figures more. Yes, yes. Before. So we'll just take that out. That's just to let us know oh, the round I figure. Which I think you might should do. put the fire department in there. Yes. Okay. you got to figure out it's all. Okay. So we're going to put the, how much? How, the motion will have probably about 7,200. But could you have Cindy send up to Karen the, yeah. the whatever yeah, your right. research was? you got to get the uh, estimate on shipping on those those uh, storage cabinets. Okay. And then we want, and so how much are we going to add now for what Peter needs? 1200 1200 So we'll ask about 72 Was, was that coming from some sort of government contract uh, or is that W.B. Mason? Or no, uh, Northern Safety Industrial, whatever it's called. We get, a, uh, we get stuff down there all the time. You know? Northern Safety Equipment. <coughs> We support it as well. We support this too. Okay, now 20, which is 33, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate a borrowed sum of $3,470 to increase the highway department administrative assistant hours from 20 a week to 24, or take any action. Do you have a motion? I have the motion second. To put it on. I'll second. Any discussion on that? Not for me. I think Cindy needs this because she's been bringing in a lot of extra grants for us. She's been working on all kinds of grants, and I think she needs these extra four hours to do that. I do. She's been doing an excellent job down there, I have to say. Okay, we voted, we voted not to support this. I mean, how many, how many hours are we going to have down at the highway? As it, uh, she's only putting, right now, Dave, she is putting in some extra hours down there doing all these extra grants, and I mean, if we don't give her some more hours to do it. No, I understand that, but I hear this. Okay. I hear this argument every time this goes up. It started out at 8 or 10, then it went to 15, 18, now it's up to 20, now it's 24. Yep. Yeah. I mean, so how many it's hours? Only, it's only I mean, four more hours a week. If the, yeah, it's four more hours a week, in it, but, but it used to be 15, then it went to 20, so now we're talking eight hours. You're talking another whole day. I mean, she brings in $2 million a year on average. For the last eight that's good. Years. You can. Right, I understand that, and I'm not saying we should balk at them doing the, the, the job. And, 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 and if we and had a grant writer, that would cost us a lot more money. money. It would cost us a lot more than that. She's, she's, she's been doing this. I mean, she's done. She did all this extra work okay. down there for the Dunbrook well, Bridge, and she's yeah. gone above and beyond. But I want to just bring. I'm just bringing it to light of yeah. where where we're going on this budget. That's yeah, all. Yeah, the cost benefit analysis of, of any of the things that we might be putting on there. This is the well, I mean, you that can, that's what she, that's her job is to write grants and if you get grants, it's no, actually it's, it's not. No, her job. That's part of a job. No, it is. Part no, that's, job. that's part of a town administrator job. Yeah. So no, 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 we're saving an eighty-five thousand dollar a year position by yeah. by spending thirty-five hundred dollars on somebody that has this skill okay, set. Okay, but what we've done here with this position over the years is when she's down there, part of her job is to write grants. You just no. said it. No. No. Just no. Said, no, 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 we we, said. We've been begging to do that. No, 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 no. You, we've been giving her extra hours. You've said this meeting after meeting. She's, she's given these hours to help write grants. That's part of this. You don't need well, a, we, we, you don't need a, you don't need a secretary at the highway barn for 20 hours just doing paperwork. She's down there writing grants. Am I right? Hey, 
And, well, and that's good. She does a good more, job. Actually, it's more she than that. She does a good job. So, so some of the things that you don't maybe don't understand is that there's more to it than just the paperwork that goes into the highway department. There's a lot of communication, like when you see what's gone on with the Dunbrook Bridge. <laughs> yeah. and then I that, understand that, that. There's, there's a lot of correspondence with engineering. There's a lot of correspondence with the state. There's getting the state and the engineers to talk to one another. There's getting the army. And that's why there's, that's why there's 20 back. hours. And that's okay. why there's 20 hours. I get it. So you get it. That's why she's got so 20 hours. So how are we going to continue to do that sort of thing? Without yep. properly funding it, we're going to move so the we're, question. So we're going to move the question. It's on okay. the warrant. If you guys don't want no, to, no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just letting the townspipeople know. We'll totally, we we'll totally okay. let them know. We'll, uh, In fact, you're on TV we, tonight. Keep yeah. talking. Okay. Hey. Can I have right. a vote on this? Okay. All yep. in favor? Aye. All right. All right. We we're didn't done. support it. So. Okay. okay. And now, on that um, thank you. I really want to say some things here. I know. I know. That's done. Bite your lip, Herb. Bite done. Right. And now, Herb, uh, we have already talked to Cindy about this. She had put in um, to amend the driveway cut. We're going to pass <coughs> over this because we have talked to Sharon. And it's okay. kind of late to put this in, so maybe we could do this for the fall. Oh, wait a second. There's a, the put, you can change the town bylaws. We just can't change the zoning bylaws. So no, absolutely, no, this is zoning. No. No, no, no. Sharon's helping us. Oh, yes. okay. If I may, um, Cindy ran this by me to find out if the procedure was correct. Yeah. She wanted to add a zoning bylaw. I pointed yeah. out that there was a driveway provision in the town oh, bylaw, mm -hmm. and that it would be better for her, faster, less procedure involved, to simply amend the town bylaw. Smaller government. And that's what I suggested she did. And that's what you're, you're looking at now, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. So will not involve the planning board, no, it will not involve the zoning. Yeah, just yeah, see that one. Oh, and oh. I gave her some suggested wording. I don't oh, know if she saw it. I just involved yep. adding an amount of a fine yep. and a person to administer the, um, the enforcement part. Yep. Designating who, who will be right. the official but she enforcement should bring this before the bylaw committee, too. We, we want to eventually take and get it through and do that. It was too so late we got this year. A, it's too late. So we could put this on in the fall, couldn't we? That's what well, it's saying. That's yeah. what it's saying. We'll put it on the fall. Yeah, that would. Yeah. That would be fine if we do it that way. Yeah, in the fall. So you should probably have her do this and present this to the bylaw committee too. All right. I don't care. I just. Either, either way. <laughs> oh, I, we just we want to make sure we got information correct. Yeah. We're getting it from all the okay. towns and stuff. Okay. The best one out there right now is the town of Spencer. Okay. So we're trying okay. to put okay. that one together yeah. so we can adopt. Okay. So you can present, but you. Well, I know other times when we've put other years when the selectmen have talked about different bylaws that they want to change, and then the bylaw committee gets up and says that they hadn't heard about. Right. So we just want to make sure that you no. bring this to them so they you know, get the approval. That's fine. And this is the last. Yep. That's fine? Yep. yep. Okay. My okay. other argument, if I may, my other argument with Cindy was that if she went and put something in the zoning bylaws, you would end up with two bylaws addressing the same issue. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. No, we don't want it. Okay. So All 21 right. is 34. Now we're going. Okay. 24. Uh, the next one, this just came in this afternoon. Okay, do we, do we want to, uh, I'll give you a motion to not include that in the warrant. Do we need that? Oh, no, we don't have to because no, we're not putting it in. Okay. Okay. Now we're going on to, this came in, uh, to 34. This is number 34. Do you have this one? Is this yeah. for the police? Yeah, you have a motion. Okay. To raise and transfer or borrow the sum of nineteen thousand six hundred for two cruiser radios and two portable radios that will be needed to complete to the mandated state upgrade radio system or take any action relative thereto. This was put in by the police department. What was the figure, Linda? Nineteen thousand. Nineteen thousand six hundred. And that's for two radios. Yes, and that's probably for the two new cruisers. And they're mandated by the state. It's two cruiser radios and two portable radios. Yes. And this is 34. <clears throat> so we have to do that because it's mandated. Yeah, this is so you guys know what's going on. He's, he's, the state's making him change all his radios, and he's trying to do one or two a year. He did a couple last year, and he, he had one in the new cruiser when he got it, so that was added into the cruiser price. But he still has a few more to go, and I think he he's had a couple more next year. Out, but they changed the mandate. That's right. And okay, next so year he's going to have a couple more of these. Right. We, have the, we have the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Somebody want to entertain a motion to accept 19,600 for radios? 
Now, Second. Now All we favor? have to talk about. Okay. Now, we're, now we have to talk about with the, the safety. We want to wait. Maybe wait for Mr. Snyder to come back on us on the safety equipment because we rescinded the uh, procedure there that we had put the policy in on that last week. Why was that? The reason that we did was because, like um, Herb said, it was going to cost what about ten thousand dollars. It was uh, fourteen something. Yeah. To, uh, for each person down at the highway garage here, out of the three. Could you forward those numbers to us? What, what that package was? I already sent it to everybody once. We didn't get it. What's the, um, what, 14,000 to, to do what? 10,000, yeah, because I know we can't, 10,000, okay. so we'll have to write up And what does that, that entail, Herb? Everything. It's 10. Okay. If the town's mandating that we have to have certain things, the town has to pay for it. Okay, and what is, what's that entail for the, for the uh, 1200 or 1400 You guys created the issue, so I just brought up all the safety stuff that everybody's supposed to have. And okay, what so what's, what's each worker supposed to have is what I'm asking you, a hat hat? Well, I don't know, Dave. You're the one that uh, has the issue. I know. I brought up the issue about when you're cutting trees, you should have a hat hat, and then it got into a safety issue. So now what I'm asking you on a financial basis is what is what is it costing per man? You said what, 1200 And what is entailed? 14, today. fourteen. Okay, 14 and change. What is what is we spending a 1400 on per man? A hat hat? What else? Okay, every safety piece of equipment for the person. Okay, right. could you tell me what and that is? Safety glasses okay. and so on and so forth. All right, what else? Hat hats? Prescription safety glasses about $400 a pop. Okay. Hat hats? You got the list. I've sent it to you guys. No, we did not get the list. I wouldn't be asking you right now for the list. If I, if I had the list, I would not be asking you for the list. I've sent the list up there. And did, did you also tell me, Herb, the other day that when you, like when you were going to do the work on the sawmill pond over there, on the dam, you needed like some halters too? Uh, all the safety harnesses all that we're going to need and all that stuff. Too, you those said ain't you all, cheap. You said those you only had one. Those are like something dollars yep. a piece. Then we need the things that we got to put on the beams. Those are another couple hundred dollars a piece to hang from. So, you know, we're creating more things in this town. That's why so, so we that's why we were into that right. the other day to see if we get the money up to the town meeting. To put this on? We have a motion huh? to put it on. Yeah. Okay. What's the figure? So, do, do, what? What's the figure, Herb? Well, help me. I don't have a document. Don't why should board ask one thing? And that's what they got. Now they're asking about personal safety stuff. Yep. It's, I think I said 4500 for the three guys. Total. Total. Yeah. So $4,500. So yeah. that's my motion. <clears throat> we don't want OSHA walking through the door. Yeah. So that's 45 a guy. Right. No, no 14, 45. 1400 a guy, three 14, guys. 14 and change per guy comes right. up so about 4500 $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $4, $
Did we want it to close? The you window? guys on board with the 4500? I mean, you want to wait for some more docs or real documentation? Uh, I, 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 I motion to approve yeah, the 4500. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'd that. like to make, have, entertain a motion what? to close the annual town meeting warrant. Made a motion to approve the 4500. And uh, this discussion that we can open it up if we have to put something else on. Cool. All in favor? Aye. Okay, now we have to do one. We yeah. haven't had any. Well, I just wanted to see what, what was entailed on cost of the town. And what I had discussed with Terry today before she left that she didn't realize that a lot of these articles came from her. So we're going to okay. open All in favor? the special town meeting okay. and then we will close it on Friday if I can have a So you're going to. So just because they weren't listening, we're gonna we're gonna open open the special, special again because we special don't have, again special again because we don't have <clears> any <throat> articles because the town accountant did not realize that she was responsible to put a lot of those on. Right, and so we're gonna okay. open it. Uh, yeah. now we're gonna open it tonight and then we will close it on Friday at three p.m. Now what about this this stair thing going upstairs? We're gonna have that as an article too. Oh. The stair no, 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 no. No, it's like being reviewed and studied yeah. and all well, we those wanted to get a place cut on there and then we we're going to come up with a price as long as we have the three bids. Yeah, That's what we discussed tonight. We discussed that you said you were going to put it on. But I did, no, Bill's got a No, Bill, we're going to is we we're going to put it on and see if we got the three bids before the meeting and then we and if, then and then if we did not get the bids, then we weren't going to go forward until the fall. Is that what was that what we said, Karen? Put it in like it, yeah. Yeah, you want to place it in? I would like to place it in. So you want to write, you want to write something up then, and we'll get it in. Yeah. So, do then, it, so well, why don't we go ahead and uh, make a motion that we reopen the annual yeah, we'll, town meeting yeah. warrant momentarily? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And then, uh, can I? Can all, all in favor? They're all in favor. Yeah, okay, and then, uh, <coughs> and then, uh, do you want a motion to draft to include in the articles? Uh, include an article related to the chairlift. Yeah, to the chairlift. And then I was also thinking too, shouldn't we put one on there about um, appropriating some money also to to bring down the tax? The tax <laughs> Are you getting this money, Linda? I'm just saying a proposal. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of it. I mean, we usually put it on, Dave, every year. It goes it's on. It's time. It goes on every year. It's time. Are oh, you going to put it on? I think it's good. It has to go. It's that has time. Okay. Is it on? It, for Is your it? committee's benefit, I don't have all kinds of copies, but I got a couple copies. Is it on here? What article number is the uh, chairlift or stair lift? That'd be 37, 30, okay. I think. Well, let me say 36, right? No, 36 35. was the safety uh, equipment, wasn't it? Huh? I have 35. Well, 35 is the radius. The stair lift? 30, 35 is for the safety equipment, so it would be 36. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And what you see, what you see is what you get. Do we have the wording from other town meetings about that? I don't think it was on last year. So we can find it, the wording from it. We'll find the wording on it. Let me see what it is. I'd like to make the, entertain a motion to include that on the uh, annual the, town meeting warrant. You have the motion. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll just go, we're just going to put it on, Dave. Some years we have it on there, and we, when we'll just pass over it. That's fine. We'll see, see what we're going to have to see what we have for free cash here. Yeah. Well. So it's a. It, it's an article to put on to reduce the tax. We usually take money if it can come. Reduce the taxes. Please. We to reduce the tax. It's a, It's usually transfer. Transferable. Transfer. A, it's usually transfer. Transfer a sum of money because usually it comes either from free cash Trans or from stabilization. Well, we'll get the proper yeah, wording because yeah. it's usually yeah, every I'm year. Fine. We used to always put it on every year, and the last few years they've kind of stopped doing it. Okay, so we'll take a vote now to close it again. I'll make that motion. No second. <laughs> and we and then discussion if we have to open it again to put something else on. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And are we we're all finished? We don't have anything else to bring. Well, up? I just handed out a document that I created oh, okay. on cumulative gross tax receipts of the town. Mm -hmm. 
And what I did is I plotted cumulatively month over month. So what the only three data points that aren't real data points are in FY17, the last three months, because we don't have the data. But if you followed the trend for the last two years and you plotted that same trend, it would suggest that we're going to be somewhere around 5.3% ahead of what we've been doing. Uh, about 10% of that comes from Al and his work on the, on his work in the assessor's office, so I think Al needs to get some credit for what's going on, as well as Sandy and her efforts, and I'm just suggesting that we may find money at this meeting or we may find meeting in, money in the fall that we weren't expecting necessarily. So I would suggest that we uh, hold our powder dry and we decide what we need to be doing either in June or in September, uh, November or December. Do you have a question? That's going to be one of our discussions, hopefully Thursday. And Carrie is working on; she's going to be working on the spreadsheet this week. All the budgets are in, except for the treasurer. Well, we will. I told you we'll get Holly to get. Yeah, uh, Holly's plan is to have no, us we'll Thursday. We'll talk to get Carrie it tomorrow. Yep. Okay, she no. doesn't have it yet. No, I you talked to her today. She, to set and I up talked to her last week. We have a spreadsheet. Yeah, we'll, we'll, they, they we're, we're there. Spreadsheet. Yeah. When do you think maybe you'll have that ready Honest. so that we can get together maybe and discuss yes. the, yep. the monies? Do you have an idea where we that. can we're have today. a meeting to do that and get together again? And we're meeting again on the 23rd. That too, that'll probably be too soon? Please? No, that's fine. Do we have much on the agenda for the 23rd? Depends on care, right? Yeah. We'll have another joint meeting. She's going to be going to spreadsheet this week. Well, she has. We're starting at 6.30. Yeah, we'll yeah I haven't talked to her. I don't okay. know if we will still have the certification back on. If it's just going to go in on this Friday, which would be the 12th, I don't know if we'll have certification back yet or free cash. Then, we'll, then we just have to move after the 23rd, that's all. Mm -hmm. We'll just have to move it up some more. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't give us a whole Do, lot of time. No, it does not. <laughs> and the reason we're, li we're a little behind on the, getting the budgets done is because we haven't gotten, there's been many holdups, so okay. out of our control. So we're right, we never, still don't have the treasurer's budget, so you'll get me that this week. That was okay, so market. potentially, right, that's potentially what I'm saying, why clients. don't we set up a joint meeting for the 23rd? Huh? Yeah. For the 23rd, yeah. and we'll start the meeting at 6.30. Yeah, that's that, fine with us. We'll get that going first, and then we'll take care of the other, the rest of the thing. Okay, I'd like to end. Are we all set then? Anything more? Like would you like a motion to adjourn? Yeah, I would like a motion. Yeah, I'll curb. I didn't see you. I, since I've been to the advisory board with my budget and stuff, and I've asked the advisory board, could I have some feedback on it? And I haven't got it. Can I find out what my budget's going to be if it's changed from what I submitted? And this is the first time you're asking me. Oh, no. Marie's got the email on it. Okay, well, we this, this, we this, this is the, okay, this is the first time you've asked me, so I will have an answer for you tomorrow. Well, I'd like to know what it is, because I'll okay. I'm going to be Well, like I said, you just, you just, you just, you just, no, no, I'm going to, I'll give it, you just asked me the question. This is the first time I, you are asking me, and I'll have an answer for you tomorrow. Communication's got to get a little bit better in town with uh, everybody. We've been saying that for years, and I've been trying to do that myself. You told us to communicate with Marie. That's correct. And it's not happening. Okay. No. Okay. So we'll run that by its mouth. So did we say, did we have, okay. did you like the motion to adjourn? I, Someone want to make a motion to adjourn? You have that motion. Motion. Adjourn. Who's seconding it? Aye. All right. All in favor?